Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, and many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. And this is part of the e-commerce mastery series where top sellers and experts teach you what really works to boost your business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight-figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and they leave with lifelong friendships. Check out rise25.com. It's run by myself, co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only and we even give out the coveted Golden Goat Award, but you'll have to come to find that out. Today I'm really excited. We have Edmund Torbati. He's the founder of Label Choices. You know, every time I was doing research for these clean whole health companies, his face and name of his company kept popping up all over the place. Um, it provide, His company provides labels for some of the industry's most recognizable brands. For more than a decade, Label Choices delivered some of the highest quality labels for the cosmetic, bath and body, food and beverage industries, and this includes Makeup Geek, Medulla Beauty, Coconut Girl Ice Cream, which makes me want to eat it after he's describing it before we started, and Nutty But Nice, and so many more. Edmund, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, man. This is awesome. I love your energy. I'm so excited to um, do this. Me too. You know, you have so many really interesting stories, and we're going to get into the link between ourselves and how it influences our business. But first, I have to dig deep into labels, right? You've been doing labels since probably before 2004 uh, when the company was founded. Um, what's the biggest mess you've had to clean up? In other words, someone came to you and they had someone else do the label and they're like, Edmund, we need this fixed because we need our labels on our products. I mean, you don't have to name the company that obviously did question. it, but that's a good question. Well, I'm look, I'm really grateful for, to my cousin first of all because um, he started me the game when I was going to USC, University of Southern California, yeah. and before my senior year, um, I was basically sitting on the couch um, and watching TV, and my mom's like, "Get off your ass, <laughs> go get a job," you know, and I'm like, "What do you mean? Like, you know, it's my summer, you know." And this was before the entrepreneur program, and I was excited. I'm going to run my own business. I'm going to do all this stuff. And what so, what year is this? Going into your this senior was year? This was 1997. I mean, going into your senior year, or what? Yeah, yeah just okay. for my senior year. So I'm very grateful because basically she influenced me to go see my cousin Pedro, um, who basically has a company called ABB Labels in downtown Los Angeles, and they had some really big brands, mm. and I didn't really know of it. I'm like, mom, labels? Like, you know, you're a kid. You're thinking back then, this was when the dot-com was just coming and right. like technology. And so you're getting influenced by everything around you, you know, like labels. And then she reminded me, well, you've been to his home many times. You know he's <laughs> in Bel Air. You know he has nice cars. You know he has kids. I mean, you might as well at least go see him. And so that's how my journey started with labels. And he literally threw me in the fire and said, go sell. So I, I would say in the 20 years that, you know, since I started in the game, yeah. I've seen a lot of stuff. And the biggest reason why I started Label Choices, um, you know, in 2004 was when I started to see the opportunity on the Internet. And the biggest issue that I found was the biggest problem I had, this actually is a perfect one, Bacchus Energy Drink. Have you guys ever heard of Bacchus Energy mm -mm. Drink? Well, these guys were competing with Red Bull at the time. So I go door to door, right, and I, it was hard to finally land these guys. They were getting their stickers that, you know, their, their stickers that you end up putting on, like, the liquor store windows and stuff, and it had this big Bacchus energy, and it looked great. And I said, we can do it for you. He's like, well, if you could save me money, because I'm paying a lot to this ad agency. I said, of course. So I take it back, and then I talk to the team there at ABB Labels, and they say, we can do this. Here's the price. And the guys were so excited, and they, we even had to recreate the artwork because they didn't have the artwork because the other company They've known it. Existed, right? Yeah. So I, we do all this stuff, all this energy, and then little I know when they ran the job, I look at it, and I compare it to what sample they gave me, and it looked like crap. Hmm. And then I'm like, what is this? They're like, well, we couldn't get that same thing. That was screen printing. I was like, well, why didn't you tell me? That's when the journey started, the clicking started, you start studying business and Tony Robbins and all of these guys, the Chet Holmes of the world and you know all of these guys that influenced me and I'm like, wait a second, how do I do it better? 
and that's how our business model is better because we're not depend we're not detem- we're not stuck by a manufacturing plan. Our business model we have partners and trade partners that work for us, and everybody has their their certain game. And so they could only do flexographic presses, 10, 15 year old presses. They didn't have the screen technology. They didn't have offset. They didn't have digital, for example. So that's the beauty of kind of like where we're at. So I would say that was a nightmare type of thing, but it was a perfect opportunity that kind of made me aware of the limitations of being a manufacturer. Edmund, what else did you have to do in your cousin's business when he brought you in? Well, I'm very grateful because he and his partner, Albert, pretty much taught me the game. So we would have lunches all the time and order Persian food. You know, I'm Persian. And so... Uh, we would order kebab or we would order this or that or sometimes we would bring in food. or And it was just such a nice family environment. So I just learned everything. Like I did sales, but just being around there, yeah. so grateful to them because they helped me get started in the business as well. Because when I was still there as a rep, you know, getting commissions for some of these clients, they still allowed me and my team to work out of there. I paid them a little bit of rent. So oh, really? you know, that's the message here mm. that y'all need help, man. Like it was, it was just a perfect stepping stone for me to be able to build label choices, you know, little by little organically, you know? So you were going door to door. Who were some of, what's a, a big account you landed because you were just hustling and selling at that time? Um, that's a good question. Um, it wasn't just door to door. It was also calling and setting up appointments. Yeah. Um, you know, what I'm being shown to tell you, it wasn't, it it, 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 this is where, where the thing is. It was hard because... That's what I want to highlight. Yeah, you were doing cold calls. Yeah. That's why I started recognizing, I think what I should share with, with everyone and you is that I started to realize how grateful I am to the Internet. Because when I basically, when I later went back, I graduated, I failed at a couple businesses. And again, a lot of it was because of my fear, right? And so... I would listen to my dad and everybody around me, you know, go get a job, you know, you know, it's going to take a while. And, and I listened to the noise, right? Yeah. The point is when I came back and I worked for my cousin again, right, was when the magic started to happen. I started to start seeing how do we be more efficient? Something that took me a few months to land that was an okay account. I picked up the phone once that they usually the receptionist handle, right? The yeah. customer service CSRs. And one day I just picked up the phone and there's this guy who answers the phone. He has some kind of food product and he says, I just found you on Yahoo or whatever it was. And he's like, you know what? I'm nearby. Can I come see you? I'm like, yeah, come on in. Literally comes on in and I get the order within an hour. And this guy turns out to be a good, decent account, like hummus or something, right? right? The point is, like, I was like, wait a second. And then the next time I took a call, and then I land another call, just over the phone within a couple conversations, that's when it clicked, and I'm like, okay, labelchoices.com. So that's when we became a .com in the early days, because I knew the power of the you internet. You saw the power of the internet. Yeah, because it was early on. Nobody was doing it. Google AdWords, and when I was doing all this SEO stuff, at that time, there were very few players kind of doing labels at that, at that time. Now mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. You get thousands of label companies all around, you know, that they show up. That's the key. They show up. Back then, they didn't really show up because they didn't really know the, the internet game. Mm-hmm. You know, Adam, what's interesting looking at your background is um, you majored in entrepreneurship, right, at USC? Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's undergrad. Yeah, undergrad. Senior, it's a senior emphasis. Gotcha. So, and that's why I went there. That's one of the biggest reasons, you know, that I went, obviously, to do that program. Yeah. So, you know, usually you hear with the successful founders, they've had several failures or tries before they hit the one. Yeah. What were some of those several ones that didn't work out like you planned? Oh, yeah. I'd love to share that, actually, because I want to encourage people to realize that, you know, sometimes you need to go through those things. And also, hopefully, if I can encourage people to not go through some of that stuff, <laughs> Right. Like if I had a coach or someone like in my ear or if I was connected like I am now connected to source, you know, I would I would be in a different place. So um, one of them was um, shortly after I graduated, um, I got fired, by the way, from PC Mall Creative Computers, which was in Torrance, California. And there was like I was doing sales and selling computers and digital cameras. So it was perfect that I got fired, by the way, because I didn't want to follow directions and the 24 year old. Um, 
you know, kid who didn't even have a college degree, I was 22 at the time, he basically didn't care. Like, I'm like, this client, they have like maybe 100 computers they can order, right? They're a big company, and he's on the phone asking me, what's the difference between the AMD chip and the Pentium chip? I had no clue. They gave us two weeks of training, and they weeded everybody out if you didn't get 80% or above. And the culture was good to see that because I saw what kind of culture, and it stemmed from the top from that company. Yeah. You know, Creative Computers is a public company. And so at that time, they were spinning off UBID, and like they, were, they had mm. Mac Mall, PC Mall. But that was a perfect lesson because I needed to get fired. Because it was kind of like if I kept sticking around, I wouldn't have tried these businesses. So what I ended up doing is it was perfect that I needed to be there because I was resisting working for a computer company. I was like, my first job out of USC, what the hell am I doing? But like it was a perfect thing because I learned about this whole technology game I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And it just came out. That was in 1999. It was digital cameras. And we started to sell digital cameras. So I got fired, and I'm like, what do I get into? And I start this company called Tech Camera. And it was like really early days. I mean, like, you, there was these comparison shopping sites, which kind of pissed me off. I'm like, why do you have to have these comparison shopping sites based on cost? How am I going to survive, right? right? So that kind of created a little bit of doubt. Then I was working out of my mom's and dad's home in Santa Monica to pay off my USC loans. And, and so I'm grateful that I had that. And that's another message for people who are, you know, maybe single, don't have kids. Bootstrapping, so, yeah. Whatever it takes, right? So because I didn't have expensive rent and I could pay off my loans, it was a little bit more comfortable for like a couple months to try to play with this thing. Yeah. So the, that message was really unfortunate because, for example, back then starting in the early days of a huge industry, which I knew was going to blow up, I didn't see it through, and my dad would come every day, and, and I love my dad. What He's was your idea for that business? Were you buying I, well, camera? My idea was to sell at the time, again, not, you know, you're, you're basically like 22, 23. All I knew at the time was, okay, I went to entrepreneur program, I did business plan, I did feasibility, you know, I did some stuff, so I'm like, I did some sales, so how do I, what do I do? Let me at least sell to cameras. But then I kind of had a roadblock because I'm like, how do I sell these with these guys who are selling it online for super cheap? Yeah. So I was trying to figure out what's my angle. Yeah. But then I kept listening to the outside and my fear kept creeping in. Right. And so that's the thing. The fear, you could either use it to your benefit or it could destroy you. And in that case, it destroyed the opportunity because I actually had an opportunity where like Canon calls me up. Canon. And said, we heard from somebody that you have inventory of this particular digital camera. And I said, yes, but I didn't. But I was working an angle to get it. And they said, well, we could start sending you people. But then a week later, I end the business. Really? Like, but I mean, you never know. If I just stuck it out, figured out a way, how do I make money? What, what made you decide to end it? Well, again, fear, I think. I think fear and you want certainty. And so back then... I was very much certainty driven. Right. So basically the fear creeps in and they're like uncertainty, uncertainty. And my dad, my dad, I love my dad. He started me out in this whole personal development space and I'm grateful to him. He's always been pushing me and challenging me, but little did he know he created even more doubt. And I lose it, right? Because every day he came, I live it I'm living in that that with their in their place in that room right in my own room and he would come up he's like what happened today did you make any money did you do anything today and I said dad no but I'm working on it. why don't you just go get more experience why don't you go get a job why don't you go make then you could come back to this another time the problem is I listened to the noise what that were you on what were you fearful about or uncertain about at that time was it there weren't any, enough sales so you were thinking I want to move out of my parents or what was what was creeping in your head that's a good question I don't know Looking back at it, I have to like look and connect, but the more I keep seeing it, it was almost like... Because I, I feel like you get a call from Canon, right? That seems like yeah. that's the break that you want, but it's exactly. still, it wasn't enough for you for some reason. It wasn't enough because I had too many unknowns. And look, when you're this young kid, when you're not connected, and you have this fear that, you know, oh, this is going to fail, my programming back then was... Well, let me quit so that I'm not a failure. 
So there was probably so many programmings and conditionings that were going on at the time that I have no idea, but I didn't really see the light. I almost like, you know, when you're in a situation, you're tunnel vision and you kind of also like you start, you're also the ego creeps in because again, my programming, I learned this big time from doing my spiritual work and just coming back from India again three months ago doing deeper work. I have realized that my programming started from one year old. My dad has it. A lot of people have it. My Persian community has it was I need to puff myself up in order to survive, which is yeah. make yourself look better than you really are. And so essentially I had so much programming and you have no idea. So it could be 50,000 reasons why I quit, you know? Right, right. So the next, so what'd you do next after the, so, the camera? So then basically um, the other business that I was actually passionate about more it suited me, which again, we're, how we work with holistic companies is our focus, yeah. is I was so into like herbs and acupuncture. You were, and, even at that time. Oh yeah, big time. Because that's ahead of the, the curve. Most people weren't yeah, into that. Now yeah, it's now I, it's definitely accepted. Yeah, I'm 40 now and I started when I was like 14 as a vegetarian and again, oh. I was influenced by people like Tony Robbins and all these books I read and at that time, he talked about being a vegetarian and don't eat meat and dairy. But the point is I was into these herbs and I tried acupuncture and my mom is a pharmacist. So, you know, Western medicine, right? right? So I had her one day come and I said, mom, I have a cold and a flu and I was heated up. And I said, mom, I heard about this acupuncture and there was this Chinese lady, you know, um, in like Marina Del Rey and, I, and we live in Santa Monica at the time. I'm like, mom, I'm going to go. And she's like, well, what is this you're going? This is BS. You know, <laughs> let me give you some aspirin or whatever, you know, right. like just get some sleep and take this or whatever. Right. right. And I'm like, mom, there's a better way. And that's kind of how it all started. And my mom actually came there. And the beautiful part about it, it, she started to see. And that's what awareness happens when you start to see. Sometimes you need experience. My, 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 the acupuncturist, the Chinese lady was so beautiful and sweet. She took my mom's hand who was very like not believer and said, come and put her hand like behind my neck because she put needles there and you're a chiropractor and I know you could relate and understand this world. Mm -hmm. And literally my mom felt steam coming out. She wow. couldn't deny it. And then literally my, my fever started coming down oh. and I felt better. And so that's kind of been my journey. So, so that business was great. Because, yeah, what was that business then? So that business was before six hour energy, right? I was like 23 or something or whatever at the time. Um, 24, I don't know. And so the six, before the six hour energy or five hour energy, whatever it's called, right? Um, I read this book from Dr. Heinerman. I don't know if you've ever heard mm -hmm. of Dr. Heinerman. No. He wrote, this, he wrote many books, but one of them resonated with me and I bought it. And it was called Encyclopedia of Herbs and Spices. And I'm reading through all this stuff, yeah. and this guy has this energy formula. And he said, this is the million-dollar energy formula I'm giving you to the world because this one company that I sold this formula to basically didn't do us justice because they did put club moss. Chinese club moss gives you a euphoria feeling when you mix it with, like, Gota Cola and, like, a few other ingredients. But what happened is they started to get really greedy. So they were making a lot of money and people loved this product and it was clean. They started to skimp on the product. He mm. says, you know what? I'm not going to have this happen anymore. This is to the world. And I was like, man, I want to do a product like this. And I was like, and you don't even have ephedra. There's no caffeine. And back then, ephedra Ma Huang was not banned. Do you know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, yeah. So I was like, let's do something clean. And why don't I do an actual like energy shot? And flavor it. Wow. So I actually literally fly to see Dr. Heinerman. He was intrigued, this young kid where trying was to he, Where was he based out of? In Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. So I go on a Sunday and everything is closed. <laughs> I'm trying to walk around. And so my flight was for the day. And I go see him. He's like, we're going to have to tweak this formula because you need to flavor this thing. And these, these things don't taste good. Herbs, so, yeah, it can taste horrible. Horrible. Yeah. So we tweak the formula, right? And then I team up with this like Las Vegas formula company, flavor company. 
So I'm working with them, and I'm trying to figure out containers. And then I'm working with uh, Peter Krauss, who I love this guy with the SBA. He was my consultant at the time for business. And still today, we're friends, and I really honor him, and I'm grateful to him because he helped me even with label choices, by the way, in the early days. And, and recently, we, we, we saw each other as well. He teaches at UCLA as well, and he teaches extreme marketing and, and a couple classes like extreme that. Extreme marketing, okay. Great guy, great guy. But anyways, he was telling me, why don't you go sell this to the truck drivers and go do focus groups and sell it to this? And I'm like, my gut kept saying, why truck drivers? This is a clean, natural, organic product. I was, I was working with this company that did all clean, organic stuff that was like they were using latest technology, and it wasn't this cheap Chinese stuff. So on top of it, I go with my family to, to China, 2001, all part of this process because I want to actually basically figure this out and source it. So what was in the product at the time? So the product had, from what I recall, it was green tea, but a very clean green tea. So it had a little bit of caffeine. Um, it was ginseng. It was go to cola. The main ingredient is that club moss. Hmm. So it was a few things. The biggest problem was flavoring that thing. Yeah. So then what ended up happening is, again, I didn't have any... I love this story so far. Go on. <laughs> yeah. So the point is, though, I go to these truck drivers. I listen to Peter Krause, and he'll love that I spread this. <laughs> I talk about this. So um, basically, I go to these truck drivers, and I start telling them, and I see these... I learn about the trucking world, and they don't have like a 7-Eleven. They, they, they pretty much could only land these 18-wheelers in these truck shops. Right, right. So... I started realizing I went to these truck shops, hey, can I sell my product that's coming out? Right. They're like, well, do you have marketing? Have you advertised for it? I'm like, no. Well, we're not going to put it here for you, right? And I was like, oh, my God, now I'm learning this business. I'm like, wait a second. And then I'm like, I'm competing against these guys who are basically taking speed. I start talking to them, and these truck drivers are telling me, I just want to take – I don't even want a liquid, I just want to take a capsule like I'm taking those ephedra, mahuang, you know, caffeine picks. Or they're taking like drugs, man. And then they're drinking Mountain Dew with the caffeine in it. And they just carry the capsules with them. And I'm like, wait a second. I'm trying to do a liquid. And these guys are saying we don't even trust it. We don't even want a liquid. Yeah. That was the most eye-opening thing to me because I'm like trying to develop a product very much like most of our clients over the years. They try to develop this product. They're mm -hmm. perfectionists on developing the best product, but they forget about the distribution and the marketing side of it and the branding side of it. Yeah. They forget who their customer is. An input from the customer. Well, they forget who their customer is. So that's what we teach our clients at Label Choices is let's first see who your client is. Let's understand them inside and out, and then you develop your marketing around that, and maybe that's not even your right market depending on your product. So that was the biggest learning experience. I got discouraged because I'm like, first of all, these truck drivers don't even want to pay more for a better quality. They're taking speed. They're overweight. They have diabetes. And so that was another example where I got discouraged and I didn't push through and all my programming kind of – but, you know, it is life. It's life. But I can tell you it's the best blessing because – I needed to go through that, and it wasn't about – I couldn't have learned that by working for a company. How it, far along did you get with that product before you decided – I got to a point where I made the product. So what was it flavored with? Little you, white, kind of like little uh, tube, like a two-ounce tube thingy. And, it was like a liquid shot type of thing? Yeah, and it tasted horrible. What, so what did you it's end up so flavoring it with? Well, how do you do this? And then I'm like, I should have done – well, they flavored it in, in Las Vegas, and I spent all this money – but again, this is pre being connected. And the message to everyone is follow your guidance and your intuition yeah. is your first step. And then there's deeper levels. So I'm here if I could encourage anyone offline at any point to reach out, social media, call me, email me. Um, if I could encourage you on this journey to get connected, all of our answers, and not everybody's meant to run your business. It's my path. It's my journey. Yeah. But um, everybody has their own gifts and what are you meant to do is my, my main message for people, you know? So when you say, Edmund, I mean, you know what you mean by when you say get connected, right? Right. But what do you, what, what do you envision and what does that look like for you? Like if people are hearing that, they don't really know what that means, but to you, it, it means a lot, right? So what does that mean? Um, that's a good question. Well, what that means is I wasn't connected up until three years ago, truly connected. Connected means connecting to whatever it is that someone connects with. There's no rule. 
But it's basically the message is that I always thought I controlled everything in my life. But little did I know that I have no control. That's the first stage. So I realized my business, I thought I control my business. Little did I know that now I'm riding the wave of guidance and source to really run things. That doesn't mean you don't do anything, but that just means that you got to get out of the way and not think that we're controlling all the stuff that's happening around us. So a lot of times we call it coincidences, Jeremy, right? Mm -hmm. We say, oh, this happened, I met this person, or this client just called, or it's a coincidence. It's never a coincidence. It's a miracle, but we don't want to call it a miracle. We're getting, we have miracles happening all day long. Once you get more connected, we start realizing that, you know, that they are miracles. We start realizing that there are people showing up because of source, um, what are the terms people use? It uh, doesn't even matter. It could be energy. It could be universe. It could be higher self. It could be supreme higher self. It could be higher power. Um, Were you it, always very spiritual? or No, no I wasn't. I was very Because, into you know, for, for you to hear yourself say this 10 years ago, would right. you, what would you think? I wouldn't believe it. I had to experience it to believe it. I had to um, get sick and yeah. be hospitalized and and have an illness that the doctors say there's no cure and scare you to the point where yeah. if you don't treat it, you're, you know, we're going to have to take your colon out. You're going to have to live with the bag, right? Yeah. yeah. And so the point is I had to go through these and it was actually perfect. Yeah. Everything is perfect. It's like it was exactly meant for me to go through that to get deeper and get connected right. and really humble myself yeah. because yeah. I was not humble and I'm learning to be that simple, humble man, but but my, that's my real truth. Yeah. And it's about getting to being yourself. And that's really the message. Getting back to being yourself. I wasn't myself. That's why I was sick. I didn't love myself. I didn't have self-worth. Um, that's why I was medicated. That's why I was diagnosed You know, on certain things. And we could talk about that, obviously. Yeah. But um, I want to encourage people to realize that if we get connected and realize it's not about us and we don't have control, that's the first step. And just be open to it. It could just be meditate, just connect to the nature. It's just about connecting, getting outside of you and the mind. So the message is when we go to India and when I do all these type of work, what they're doing is they're working on us to essentially quiet our mind, yeah. right, and quieting our inner dialogue. And the mind and the inner dialogue, which is all the questions, am I good enough? Am I going to land that account? It's like or, the self-talk type of stuff. Am I pretty enough? Uh, whatever it is that the questions that we continue to ask ourselves, it's called inner dialogue. Yeah. As you get more awakened and you get more connected and you go through these deep processes, you're essentially clearing out so much junk that's not your truth, very much like a computer. And most of you guys, and I'm sure you have, have you been, had a virus or spyware in your computer where it's affected your computer? Sure. Yeah. And how did you handle it? Like, what was the way to deal with the spy? <laughs> One of the computers, I just threw it out, but, you know, like, <laughs> but, but yeah, I had someone come in and just clear everything out and restart everything, yeah. Yeah, and they, what did they do? Didn't they clear out your old software, too? Yeah, they, they, they pretty much wiped it clean and then put up, yeah, a new one. Yeah. Depends how bad it is, but yeah, yeah. But that's exactly what basically I've been going through and it's still a journey I have many years to go I'm going to continue to go back to India and do you know continue doing oneness university which has been powerful yeah. but the point is it's not about oneness is everybody's mess it's not about it's what works for people the work that helped me heal my ch health challenge which was called Crohn's disease yeah. and I was medicated on an anti-cancer medication to treat it and you know I had colonoscopy and endoscopy a couple times and I was hospitalized with over a hundred thousand dollar bill at Cedar sinai I want to talk about this Edmund. so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the the flavor right. uh, energy shot because I want to continue on that that timeline yeah. but I want to pause that for a second I want to fast forward to when you were really sick because this is was it a big awakening for you big time so what were you experiencing at the time not not like pre-hospital but when did you first experience symptoms and, and what was going on? Yeah. Okay. So a great question, Jeremy. So, and this is applies to a lot of people of health challenges. This is just one example. Mine, thank God was very manageable, but I know some people and I see miracles happening yeah. that in instance, very quickly they get healed. Doctors can't believe it. Mine is just one example, 
But what happened was it first was and diagnosed. this was in what, what year? This, this was basically about, it started about like five, six years ago. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was it first started with the diagnosis of colitis, I think like around six years ago. Have you ever heard of colitis? Of course. I mean, this is, I this you're is like a lot of people, Yeah. I don't know what it is right now. People are like stricken with the, yeah. this stuff just coming spontaneously yeah. without you know, medical explanation for it. Yeah. You know, well, they so. do have an explanation. Yeah. And I'm very grateful that I went through the whole Western medicine route, yeah. even though I had doubts. My mom being a pharmacist, me knowing there's better ways, starting with acupuncture, yeah. you know, really young, and doing Chinese medicine, and, and seeing the mind and psychology. And I'm like, some of this doesn't make any sense. But you know what's really great? I'm so grateful that I was able to go through that Western medicine route to the fullest, so that there's no question right. marks. Right. Like, it doesn't I, work for me. Yeah. No question marks. And yeah. not only that, but now I could speak to you and to the world and say, look, this is my story. I'll tell you, I tried it all. Right. So now, they diagnosed out, you with colitis and what happened? Yeah. So you got to figure out what your truth is. But what colitis happened was I was basically using the restroom a lot. Um, it wasn't feeling right in that area of my stomach. Um, and then one thing that started triggering was I was starting to get these red things on my leg. Mm. Um, and I was starting to feel like a little bit like uncomfortable in my leg. And I didn't understand what that was. That was one other concern I was having. And then um, I went to see Dr. Targon. I was looking for the best doctors in the world in this space. And they call it IBD, irritable bowel syndrome, yeah, yeah. IBS, yeah. but this whole space of colitis and Crohn's. So I went and saw Dr. Targon. Have you ever heard of Dr. No. Targon? Um, mm -hmm. So in the eyes of all of the gastrointestinal GI doctors who deal with this space and deal with stomach issues. Yeah. Um, this guy, everybody kept saying, he's the guru. I was like, I got to go to the guru. And so I found out like a two month <laughs> wait to go see this guru. Is he in California? Or? Yeah, Cedar okay. sinai which is, you know, a well known um, hospital um, celebrities and all kinds of people, you know, have gone throughout the years, Cedar sinai So, and they apparently have, a, they have the, one of the only, there's only a few at the time at least, that they have a whole like area just for this stuff. Mm. And he's like head of all of it. He's written the books. So when you go to school, you know, and I go see these GI doctors and they say, he's God, Dr. Targon. So I'm like, okay, let me see what this guy has to say. So I go see Dr. Targon and my mom was there with me. She was freaked because my mom being raised Jewish, a pharmacist, being Persian, we being so connected as a family, um, she felt and she was so concerned for my life because she understood what was going on and she knew how bad it was because she herself for years have always had stomach issues. Even when she was in, in college studying pharmacy school in Iran and Tehran, she always had issues and she always knew that when it was time for school and exams, she, it would start acting up. Mm. Right? Yeah. And so she knew this is not a healthy situation from what she's sensing and I already got a colonoscopy and endoscopy and they like, they check your bacteria and stool and they're like, this is not looking good. Now what scared us the most was his diagnosis was new. He took a sample, they do these tests, like 400, 500, 600 bucks out of pocket, it's not insurance. And there's the only test in San Diego, California that actually could see what is your real diagnosis? This is kind of like ridiculous, right? This is how they diagnose you. So essentially, he comes back with the history of all these other people, comparing it to mine, and he calls my term not colitis anymore. He says, you have Crohn's colitis, and that scared me. And I said, what can I do about it? He says, nothing. Just keep taking that medicine called Asacol. So Asacol at the time is a mild, um, basically, anti-inflammatory. And it never felt good. I'm taking this stuff and I still felt pressure in the stomach area. Yeah. And I kept telling my mom and my mom's like, you have to take it. She's afraid of my life. You know, she's like, right. because it's scaring you. They're like, if you don't treat this, I'm telling you. It's going to get out of control. It's going to come out. We're going to have you have that bag. You can die. You know, now we're able to treat these things and aware of it before people didn't even know what it was and they die. And so you feel like helpless. You feel well, like especially if they say there's nothing you can do except for take this pill. Yeah. yeah. 
But it's not just that. I asked them a lot of questions because I was studying Tony Robbins and all these guys in the space that talking about health. Yeah. And I tried all kinds of stuff. I used to run uh, a juice bar and did stock at a health food store, One Life Natural Foods in Santa Monica. Mm-hmm. And that was when I wanted to start a health food store. So I've been in this space a long time. Right. Even co- got a couple awards for business plan, even a grant from the USC Young Entrepreneur Program at USC. And one was the Reardon Scholars Program, if you know Mayor Reardon back in the day. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I got first place there as well. And it was all about starting a health food store. And I was into this stuff since I was young. This was before I started college. And so I was doing ju- wheatgrass back in the day and like doing all this stuff. And then these guys are telling me you got to take this medicine. You know there was a conflict, yeah. but I didn't have a solution. And nobody says there's a solution. So I tried acupuncture. I tried all these things. I tried juicing. I met these guys, um, Dr. David Klein. And so he wrote this book about healing Crohn's and colitis. Mm-hmm. I read his reviews on Amazon and it seemed good. People said, wow. I talked to a couple people. What kind of doctor is he? So he's a PhD, okay. that's all, but he goes by doctor. Okay. And so I thought this is the answer when everything started to get really bad. This is when I started to do all this natural stuff and juicing and everything. I wasn't treating myself with the medication. So, of course, I was taking a risk. Yeah. I tried all this stuff. I was learning about the Gerson Institute. Have you heard of the Gerson Institute? Yeah. yeah. I was like looking at all this stuff, juicing, cleansing. And so that David Klein resonated because all his whole thing was it was all about raw diet. It was all about organic. It was all about juicing and steamed vegetables at night. And we got to clear all of your toxins. Yeah. And what triggered me to even want to do this was they wanted to get me in to do another colonoscopy and endoscopy when I went and saw another GI doctor. It was a Persian, um, Persian doctor, and my parents were there, and they're freaked out that I wouldn't listen to this doctor. The doctor said, you're going to come back to me. I said, I want to go try something else. This is what the doctor tells me. He says, there's nothing else. You're going to come back to me. This is what happens, man. You, you feel like helpless. Yeah. Right? But anyway, so I hired the David Klein, and I said, can we team up with the person who believes in you also? Um, Zareen Azar. So she's this Persian doctor who's a gastrointestinal doctor who used to work for Kaiser and she used to treat Crohn's and colitis the traditional way. But she's like, I believe in this stuff. We had it with my parents. She said, then you have to listen to everything we say. So for three and a half weeks, I moved from my Beverly Hills home to my parents' home and I'm literally hospitalized in their home. I have round the clock nurses. I start losing ridiculous amount of weight. I was at the time probably 210, 205. I don't know what it was. Like right now I'm at 200 and I'm 6'1". I went down to 147 pounds. Wow. But what was scary was the neighbor who saw us, who knew me since I was young, said, you look like you just came out of the concentration camp. Yeah, it's I was so committed to like getting healed and finding a solution for myself. And then I'm like, I'm going to have a story. I could help people. But – and the thing that it kept – really like really creating a problem was my aunts kept coming over you know they're we're all close and they're thinking i'm gonna die because they're like what are you doing to yourself so at this point you were following dr klein and the other the persian doctor's advice which was juicing raw diet and nobody saw me i only saw dr zarina Nazar one time because my parents begged them um, and let's drive to meet you in the middle halfway in a parking lot at some kind of shopping center. I mean, how crazy is this? I literally take down my pants and she checks me out in a car. I mean, like she wouldn't come to us. Like she, this, I, nobody was treating us. And this guy, Dr. David Klein, he literally like was in Hawaii. I said, can I come and see you? I'll pay more money. Sorry, I don't see clients. I'm like, his story was I healed myself. I'm going to help you guys. And I talked to some people. So it was not working for you? Huh? It was not working for you? Well, what happened was it made me more sick because yeah. they kept saying, you have more to lose. You have more toxins. But see, what triggered this whole thing was I couldn't walk also. This is what scared the hell out of me is because, and everybody around me, is because before I decided to do this, I had all these red things that they called it some kind of disease on my leg. And I was having trouble walking, so I was actually wheelchair bound at the time. So Jeez. they said, you have to take this medication, which is an anti-cancer medicine, and it's called Mercoptopurin 6MP, but we're going to have to test. Are you familiar with that medicine? No, no. 
it's mercoptopurin or they call it 6MP. It's literally an anti-cancer medicine. And literally the doctor would tell me, be careful who you shake your hand with if you take this stuff. Wow. So, so I did all this stuff. But again, I came back to Western medicine and started taking that medicine. Yeah. And they said, you're one of the lucky ones. This medicine works for you. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Now this medicine, like that's supposed to be a good thing. Like this medicine makes me feel tired. I feel helpless. They give me prednisone, which is basically a steroid. So I felt isolated in my home alone. I didn't even want to come to my Santa Monica office. And I felt like depressed. Yeah. You're on these fucking drugs. And they tell you this is your answer. For sure. So basically I was hospitalized after that because it didn't work. And it got to a point where it got me worse because they couldn't even orally give me the medication, the antibiotics. They had to give it to me intravenous. I was that weak. So that's when the Western medicine went to full end effect. So that's when I went on. I was hospitalized. I was on the medication. I, I was crying. My cousin, Sharier, I love him to death. He's a pain management doctor. His brother, my first cousin also, is a urologist, you know, and so surgeon. And so Shire was there. He saw me crying because I literally, once they took me to the hospital, the day was Mother's Day, and my mom saw I had a fistula. You know what a fistula is? It's In like your a, anus area. It's an output or something. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. But see, they were telling me it's a good thing. You want to keep cleansing. You have all these toxins. And so my mom was so freaked out. On Mother's Day, everybody was at my cousin Bobak's house. And I was hospitalized in the bed with the nurse and my parents freaking out. And my mom said, for me, please go to the hospital. Go to the emergency room. Because they saw I was sick. But I was, my mind was like, this is the only way. I don't know of another way. And they said, don't even eat kebab, man. Don't even have beef for the rest of your life. And I'm like, wait a second does this resonate with me? Like, don't even ever have it. Like, only be vegan and only be raw and only do this stuff. And I'm like, man, like, I, I tried it, man. You took it to the extreme. I tried it. I tried it, but it didn't work for me. So, I want to continue on and hear what happened with this and how you actually got better, but how do you run your business? I mean, your business is going on at the time. Yeah, I'm very grateful. Um, my right hand, uh, Gabe Munoz, um, and I'm so grateful to him because um, he, as my right hand, was running the business. You know, yeah. and you know we're small business. We play big because our business model. We don't need manufacturing plants, but we had to thank God a good system, and yeah. he he was really good. He's this amazing customer service. He knew how to do design work and proofing, and so he knew how to outsource and. He, and so during this time, yeah, there's about about three and a half weeks when I did that extreme situation and go to hospitalize. Yeah. It was about at least two couple months to three months until I could get back to things. Like, so there's no doubt. I'm very grateful that he was able to see things through. You know, because and that great. could just destroy a business. I mean, oh, yeah. that alone. Oh yeah, I'm very grateful that that it could have gone the other way. But it was the biggest blessing. That's the message for people to know. It, I needed to hit that kind of rock bottom and source, whatever you want to call it, for someone. It could be God. It could be divine. It could be Buddha. It could be Jesus. It could be energy universe. I needed that because I, would, I, I was not in a good place. You know, I thought I was. In the outside world, I'm showing that I'm good. I had an Audi A7, $1,200 a month lease payment. You know, on the outside world, it was good, but I was, I, I didn't love myself. That's what I was trying to get. It was all about the significance because I needed to puff myself up in order to survive. And when you see people like Donald Trump and a lot of people, that's how, that's what runs them. It's, it's like a lot of us, we're run by that. We all want love, but we're trying to get it through significance, which is a very low level way of getting it. You know, so I, mean, I want to go, go into what, actually happened because at this point you're still really sick and you're you know yeah. in the hospital but what system it's the business for a second there's two things going on here right it's your your personal health stuff and when i like talk that's why i love talking about this stuff is because there's still always that business going on no matter what's happening personally what systems did you put in place e even though you had a right hand man even though you write a partner some people have right. right hand man and they don't necessarily have the systems in place so that it runs what systems do you have in place were so critical so when the extreme happened, like you were hospitalized and you couldn't right. go into work. What 
what was essential that kept the business running? Good question. Um, I think just me literally having to surrender. I was forced to surrender. If you think about it, I always thought I control everything. I think that was the first glimpse to realize the business ran better without me literally micromanaging it. Really? Why do you think? I think so because I think that literally I had to just surrender. I had no choice. Yeah. I had to just trust in his pricing and his decisions and what vendor we were going to run our labels with. And there was a lot of things that ran better than when I just told him do this and do that. Hmm. And, and I guarantee you, he liked aspects of that a lot. We should have him listen to this. <laughs> so I have to be honest with myself. We don't want to pat his ego too much. but What is it? We don't want to pat his ego too much by hearing that. but No, but it's true, though. I think that um, I think that's the message, that I think that it wasn't easy, but he was able to lead and orchestrate, and I kept empowering him, and I, I had no other choice. And nobody came and checked on him. Like I remember like my dad was so worried about my business and talked to a friend of mine. And a friend of mine's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll come in and, and check him. He's a successful businessman. And at the time, I thought he's like my very close friend. But that's when you start realizing who really cares about you. Because he's, he told my dad, yeah, yeah, he's going to come and check on and gave and help in any way he can. He never showed up. Not even one time he called. So it's kind of nice sometimes when you go through these processes, but you also realize source was guiding, whatever you want to call it, and things were just working out the way it was supposed to work out. But I needed to be in that space. I needed to be sick. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. How long were you – because this is usually – it's sort of like an un- incurable, known as an incurable thing, right? Yeah. Um, how long did you suffer before you actually – got better and then take me on that that journey for a second so about three years three so years that i knew of it of course you know the, the thing uh, with western medicine it's, it's called a diagnosis and you being a chiropractor and a doctor and i'm very impressed with your background because you obviously see a lot of this stuff that's why we're talking because you see it you believe it you understand it um the bottom line message for all this was, is once I did this deep work that helped tap into see, I couldn't yeah. do it myself. I found this basically, this guy from Australia came with his wife and wanted to build their, their business here to spread the message to Los Angeles because they figured we can get a huge community. Australia is so spread out. We get the same amount of people in Los Angeles. And so right. their whole thing was they came in and then they had a whole talk and this guy he basically comes to a spiritual potluck, right? And this is at the time I'm with my girlfriend who was trying to help me in any way she could. I'm searching for answers, right? Yeah. So she takes me to um, Esther Hicks. Have you ever heard of Esther Hicks? So we go on Esther Hicks with her brother and her mother. And how amazing is this? There's only a few people that ever get, ca- that be- get be- called on the stage and she calls it a hot seat, So you literally go sit on the seat and she basically does her thing in front of everybody. So not only does she call me, but she calls also Hillary's brother. So both of us end up going on the hot seat at separate times. That was my first starting the introduction to this world. And then I saw that guy. What did she do for you on the hot seat? She started me. She she helped me see. I thought that I wanted answers. I was like, what is this? But you're you got, skeptical at the time. I was no, but I was looking for give me the actual answer. How do I heal it? Because that was my question. Yeah. I'm looking to heal this naturally. She didn't give me the exact answer I wanted, but she started me on the journey, and so I'm grateful. Well, what did she say? Um, she basically got me whatever she said. I don't remember. It's on recording somewhere. Maybe she has access to it. Maybe it's somewhere. I don't even yeah. know. But I think what the message that I got from it was put it out there, put the energy out there. That's the message I got because I never really got that. You you always see like personal growth stuff and you watch The Secret. Did you ever watch The Secret? Sure. Law of Attraction. It's essentially taking what that is but a little bit to another level was what I got from it, which was I started to put that energy out there and literally like just put it out there. Hey, world, universe, can you show me? Right? And I think that started things. That was an example. I mean, you're pretty proactive about that, though. I mean, you're flying to the doctor's house. You know, you're pretty 
you're yeah. calling the guy, hey, you're in Hawaii, can you come see me? Like, I felt like you were pretty proactive about putting it out there. Well, you know, you know, that was a start to me seeing there's something out there that there are people who could connect because I didn't see that with a lot of the personal. I mean, I've seen them all. I'm so grateful. My dad would take me to the superstar sales retreat with Mike Ferry. Have you heard of Mike Ferry? And oh, Mike Ferry. Is he in real estate? Or what? Yeah, yeah. 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 I've heard of him. Yeah. So I started in 1993 and 1994. To go to Palm Desert at the Marriott, beautiful hotel, and I went with my dad. I was very into this stuff. My dad is in real estate and a real estate agent. He would sell millions of dollars of homes, and he would buy and resell and rehab. And, and so I was involved in all this stuff, sales and influence, and you hear all this stuff. And I would, because of USC, I had like mentors like Paul Orfila, founder of Kinko's, and they all would give you advice. But the message is, is it your truth? I would have Howard Schultz. I went to Howard Schultz, who was basically who built Starbucks. Sure. After only a few stores when he bought it. Yeah. And he gave me advice, but it wasn't my truth. And it affected me for many what years. What was his advice? Um, I was getting into coaching at the time because I did all of Tony why, Robbins. Why were you talking to Howard Schultz anyways? Well, he, he became at uh, USC. Every year they, they award somebody as Entrepreneur of the Year. And so one of the years happened to be Howard Schultz. Yeah. And he came and he did his talk. And, and so... Um, I see him and I'm like, hey, Howard, I, you know, can, can you help me out? You know, <laughs> and, I, and the guy has a similar background. I'm raised Jewish as well. And, you know, I read his book once, you know. And so I was like, let me see what this guy has to say. I'm so excited about building my coaching business at the time. And um, I wanted to start doing speaking and go and doing business coaching. And I, I thought it was like so excited. I'm going to leverage it, not just one on one coaching. I'm going to go do like coaching with companies and all this stuff. And he's like, I don't like it. I'm like, what do you mean you don't like it? I'm all excited and pumped. I don't like it. I'm like, why don't you like it? I don't like your business model. I said, what do you mean? He's like, when you, but the only way you could make money is when you work. And it did click. I got that. I already always knew that. But was it, my, was it his truth or was it my truth? Right. Because it discouraged me. That's another thing that discouraged me from really doing my real truth, which is I meant to serve and I meant to teach. I meant to coach. Right. And so I was like, but there's other people. Look at Tony Robbins and look at all these people. I could be one of them. But I got discouraged. Right. Yeah. Not that he's a bad guy, but that was his that world. That was his advice. Yeah. His model of his world is you need to expand and you need to leverage yourself and you can't be the business. And I was like, you're right. Because if I get sick, I don't make money. I get that, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, I've been grateful that I've seen all these guys. I see on – you're connected with Les Brown as well and uh, Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And Jack Canfield, I met him um, as well um, at a Whole Foods in Santa Barbara. And um, I've seen a lot of these guys, Zig Ziglar Live. And um, obviously, I did Chet Holmes and Tony Robbins Business Mastery, and Chet Holmes passed away, unfortunately, very sad. But I've seen all these guys. But you know what? I put it to the corner because that stuff is is programming and conditioning. It's like the virus and the spyware. If that if you let that run you, yeah. you're screwed. So I literally put it to the side. It's like a tool chest. If I need to kind of like identify it with or take the guidance and connect it with mind stuff, and I could speak about it, great. But the truth of the matter is it's all guidance because the work that I did that helped heal my Crohn's before I went to India and Oneness University, it was this Australian guy who was very tapped in. He saw me and he said, you're stuck. I said, why have Crohn's? He said, you feel stuck in your life. I was like, what? This guy read minds? What the hell? And then he goes around to the spiritual potluck at my friend Marjan's home and he reads every single person. I'm like, I've never seen anything. I've seen psychic stuff, but I've never seen some guy in two seconds read everybody and everybody's like, oh my God, that is my problem. Oh my God, that. I'm like, what does this guy have? And that's when my journey started in this kind of realm of connecting with energy. So their message is all about connect to your higher self. Some people's message is connect to your divine. Some people say connect to whoever it is you connect with. The point is it's connect outside of you. We have our answers. Yeah. Right? It's not your mind. It's connect to source. So when you meditate and you go to deeper stages, like when I lived in Malibu, as soon as I moved to Malibu, January 2014, on the beach on Malibu Road, away from the highway, literally within a week, I got my own messages. I didn't need them to give me my messages. 
I got the message, come off of the, the mercoptopurin anti-cancer meds. I was like, I'm good. I got it. I started seeing it. So in the beginning, you need training wheels. You need people to maybe help you kind of start seeing it. But the guidance is that you want, I want to empower people to see it themselves. So I used to give messages all the time, like psychic stuff. But the problem is that's very dangerous. And so what I'm very grateful is to Oneness University in India is that they helped me go deeper and see it myself and encourage people to get it themselves. So you go through processes, right, so that you see it. You don't need anybody to tell you. That's way more powerful. So that's my message. I want to encourage people, whoever's really ready to get connected, there's so much out there now that you can get connected. So you feel that Oneness University, this place in India, is yeah. what got you over this hump and kind of got you to where you are now? I would say it took me to another level. But remember, yeah. we talk about the journey, just like your journey. You, you've had an amazing journey from the little that I see and, and how you're conducting yourself and the interviews and kind of your practice. Everything is kind of a stepping stone. At that time, Oneness University, I knew about it because of Tony Robbins years before. And I knew a couple people went to India. But I'm like, I'm not going to go to India. What the hell is this BS? <laughs> right? I'm like, this is... I feel awesome. like people fall into two camps with this, right? When they hear this stuff, right? It's, right. this is complete woo-woo BS. 100%. Or, wow, this is for me. Or, this, I resonate with this. 100%. Right? And I think anyone listening to this... I think even for me, like obviously, um, you know, in healing and natural things, it's still uncomfortable for me to hear because I know there's there's someone out there thinking this is complete BS and skeptical with it. And so I like to bring that up because I know whoever's there's someone someone listening right now is either like this is crazy, I'm gonna shut this off right now. Uh, this, or they're resonating with it, which is okay either way. So but I have a very simple answer, a very yeah. simple question to you even. Yeah. So basically, have you ever had an illness or sickness or anything yourself? I mean, to the extent that you have, no. Doesn't matter. Luckily. Any, anything. Sure, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. So my question to you is, was it psychosomatic? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can answer that. Because you work with a lot of people over the years. Right. So, well, let's, let's take it a subject. I mean, I think there's, there's a book on, like, Candace Pert. There's a book by Candace Pert, Molecules of Emotion. And mm -hmm. she talks about how, you know, psychosomatic is a very, I think, charged word. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. there's a book, Candace Pert, Molecules of Emotion. And, right. and in that, I don't know if you've, you've read it or heard of it. Um, and she talks about, she's a PhD researcher, I believe, and talks about how our thoughts can mm -hmm. stimulate different molecules in our body and physiology to occur. Right. So anyway, my point is like our thoughts can are proving you know, medically research based to produce physiological effects in our body. So yeah, that's So the answer here is Yeah. For the simple person guys who are you guys are out there, I didn't believe in this stuff either. It took me to get sick and go through this situation, hospitalized to realize, wait a second, how do I get, how do I figure out the truth? Right. And what I realized was, it's the, just like my mom, when she always would have issues in stomach and go to the bathroom or whatever, when she was stressed, that's the root of what I've learned from my experiences that most health problems and diseases are psychosomatic. Mm -hmm. So that means it's stress related, it's emotional related, it's lifestyle related, it's childhood stuff. At the end of the day, it's stuff that we're holding on, and it could resonate in different areas of our body, and it also manifests into the external world, your relationships, um, your business, um, all kinds of things, obstacles in your life, financial problems. So the message here is your inner world is a reflection of your external world. So when your inner world right. is chaos, like my inner world was all chaos, I had this $1,200 a month lease because I was trying to be something I'm not. I wasn't myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't have self-worth. Um, driving from Beverly Hills to Santa Monica and dealing with traffic and headaches and trying to time it. And it would take me sometimes an hour to come and go. And, you know, my I didn't, stresses. all kinds of stuff going on. I had issues with my dad and I didn't feel good about him. 
I was upset at my mom and stuff. Again, stuff that's unconscious. Because remember, 99%, and I know you get this, Jeremy, 99% of what runs us is our subconscious mind. Yeah. We're not even aware of it. It just runs us. So what's the whole point of this when you go deeper? Anything that you go deeper, even if it's good therapy. Most therapists I've tried, cognitive behavioral therapy over the years, marriage family therapists. I've tried coaches, Tony Robbins coaches. I've done a lot of stuff. I even worked with Lauren Slocum. I don't know that. Who's... And Lauren Slocum was uh, Tony Robbins' um, right hand for many, many years. Mm. And she's the one who actually went. She saw me when I looked sick when I was on recoptopurin mm. after the doctor says, you're good. She saw me at, at uh, Unleash the Power Within Weekend in Los Angeles years ago. And so this was when I was managing it with the medicine. And she saw me. She said, you look sick. She's known me since I was like 15 or 16 when I came to my first seminar. Really? And wow. She, and she's all about serving. And, and the thing with her is she went, Tony trusted her to go to Fiji on his island to start his new life mastery program. See, I went to his life mastery when he did a, a different version of life mastery, and it was in Hawaii and during September 11, 2001, when I was there, which was insane what happened, by the way. Right. I've September. only heard secondhand some yeah. of these stories. You were actually there. I was there, and it was unbelievable how Tony handled it, and it was crazy because I was so disconnected because I had no one connected to September 11, but I couldn't... I couldn't understand what was happening. I was like, wait a second. We were two hours before in Kona at the Waikalua Hilton, which is like a five-star resort. And so we get up at the hotel and like people are talking and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? See, it happened five hours ahead of us because we're five hours ahead of East Coast at that time. And so people are talking about plane crashing and like this and people are like wondering what the hell is going on. Are we meant to continue the seminar? It was like a five, five day or six, something like six day seminar. And it was his intensive at the time. It was his best seminar. It was his deepest seminar called Life Mastery. Mm -hmm. It changed now. His Life Mastery is more on health, right? But at the end of the day, it was nuts. What, have you, what did you hear about it? What do you know I about it? I heard that... Um, that they brought a Jewish person and a Muslim person on stage that were just irate. I don't know. Is that... I think the, the Jewish person was from New York also. I don't remember where he was from. Oh, okay. Definitely Jewish. I, I, don't, I wasn't there. Like, you tell me. <laughs> just, well, you know what? Yeah. I wouldn't say irate. I would say that there was anger. Look, we all have... It's unfortunate, right? Yeah. And that's when, when you go deeper and you start working and clearing stuff, and our non-truths, we start clearing stuff like our hatred or anger towards our parents. Everything stems from our parents. This is the root. If there's anger and resentment and you don't have joyful feelings about your parents, you're going to have obstacles in your whole life. You're going to have relationship issues, financial problems. So uh, everything stems from the main message is what makes a great relationship is you could control it. It's very simple. And this is what Oneness University and Sri Bhagavan, who's the founder well over a million people have benefited from this word. It's not woo-woo stuff. I mean, we talk about Donna Karen and all these people and the actors and celebrities go. Tony Robbins goes every year just for himself to clear and connect. He takes his platinum partners. Are you familiar with his platinum partners? Mm -mm. Platinum partners pay $100,000 a year plus travel expenses to have access to Tony. Mm. So you travel with Tony and you get very niche, small kind of, special courses in Fiji and everywhere. And once a year, he takes them to Oneness University. Really? Yeah. So tell me about Oneness. So, so Oneness University, um, I experienced it first, and I'm very grateful to Tony Robbins, because what I love about Tony is that he doesn't have all the answers, but he doesn't claim that he came up with everything. So he put us through a process that he called the Oneness Blessing. And this was years ago at a date with destiny. Are you familiar with date with destiny? Mm -hmm. And so I've attended date with destiny. I've done date with destiny leadership. I've, I've, I've also crewed date with destiny. You know, you staff it or whatever. Mm. I've done his leadership academy. I've crewed leadership academy under Lauren Slocum like four times. I was kind of all Tony, you know. So like I know You're Tony. Diehard. Before, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So the thing with Tony's work, and, and I was like, wow, if he's introducing this, I got to connect with this. So he put us through a oneness blessing, 
And he had people coming around giving these diksha blessings like this all around your head. And, and I was like, what is this stuff? And then I was in a closed eye process and he, he uses hypnosis and he uses NLP. You're familiar with the NLP, neuristic programming. Mm-hmm. So that was my whole world. When I was trying to do coaching, it was all using this kind of stuff. But remember, now I put it to the side and I connect to source. The biggest challenge, by the way, that Australian guy and that team had with me was all of my Tony Robbins stuff. Because I couldn't connect with source when I kept bringing in all this other stuff. Because these are all rules. Oh, six human needs. Um, NLP, hypnosis, this, that, sales, Harry Dent. You know, like you're bringing in all this stuff. It's literally like programming and conditioning, but it's not my truth. But when you connect to source, you get all your answers. It's pretty crazy. So going back to this oneness blessing, I had this closed eye process. And I've done all this stuff, but this specifically, I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I was connecting like almost like a life review. You know, have you heard of people who like pass away and they, they review their, their life, life like flashes before their eyes type of thing. And then they come yeah. back to life and they talk about it. Right. Right. Yeah. I literally had my version of that. Hmm. I was like, what is going on here? It was the first time I ever started connecting the dots about everybody in my life that's come in my life from childhood to current and how everybody somehow came in and it was not a coincidence. It was like all of, like it was all meant to happen. Like it was like I was starting to see how this girlfriend and this friend and then this client and then business and then my mom and then my family. Like I was connecting the dots and the message I got from Tony and this work was there is no coincidence like I said earlier. Everything is, is we're all connected. And that's what Oneness University teaches is that it's oneness. We are all connected. As I evolve, you evolve, everyone evolves. As, as I'm at this level consciously and vibrationally, and let's say um, my friend is here, and I hang out with my friend, I even get lower in my consciousness. Mm-hmm. So it's about helping everybody raise their consciousness. Yeah. And so that was the first kind of like thing. And then I remember um, one of my friends who is a doctor, and he went to India, and he told me about it. So I kind of like stuck in my mind. And the seed. He started incorporating this, and he's an ER doctor, and people couldn't believe what he was doing. And he started incorporating the diksha and this stuff and this philosophy, and he was telling me how it's helping his patients. And so years later, I'm being guided, again, following guidance. This is after I'm healed, okay? I'm living in Malibu. This is after you healed. So you only went to oneness after. 2014, yeah, I'm already healed, thankfully, Mm. gratefully, because of that work I did. But remember, this is all the grace. This is all source. Like all of this is not, I just needed those people that showed up and that person at the perfect time. I could believe in higher self at the time. Okay, I connect with my higher self. That's easy, right? So at the time it was perfect. It was exactly what I needed at the time. So then I was kicked out of my Malibu apartment. I had to leave because The guy was Egyptian Jew. I was renting a place from him right on the beach. Unbelievable. You go down. I had access to his kayak, his like, you know, um, boogie boards, everything. Like they welcomed me and their family. But little did I know he lost the place in foreclosure. (laughs) Oh, wow. So, So it created a little mess, but it was perfect. I was meant to leave. So then it was perfect because the message was you're meant to leave. And I was like, I'm homeless. Okay, what am I supposed to do? I didn't tell my family, I didn't tell really anybody, only like one or two friends knew, but my parents didn't know, Persian, Jewish, they're going to freak out, what are you doing? So I was on this journey, it was a perfect journey. So I was there in Malibu for nine months, and this journey was great. I went to Santa Barbara, I went to Ojai, I'm hanging out in Ventura, I'm hanging out all these places like Oxnard and staying in hotels, and telling everybody I'm just on a business trip, that's all I'm telling people. But I knew there was a greater plan. So then the message was, you're supposed to take a one-way ticket to Bali, Indonesia. And that's freaking me out. What the hell are you talking about? Leave my business, leave everything, one-way ticket. Keep in mind, I'm not even at the office. So thankfully, the team is handling everything. So I'm grateful. So I didn't have to be like hands-on. So, but this, that's where the journey started. So my girlfriend at the time, Alexis, sailor who I love and she's amazing and she's been part of my growth she said you know what 
you're going to Bali, why don't you go see Punawasu? I look him up on Facebook, we get connected. And what does it say? Oneness trainer. <laughs> mm. I mean, it was like everything was connected, man. I was meant to go there. I was meant to hang out with him. So what did you learn most from, what did you get most out of oneness? If someone's like, this sounds like a part of my journey or well, I'm thinking well, about. Say my experience. At the time, mm. I wasn't talking to my mom because my father left my mom after 40 years. Mm. This is a no-no. In a Persian Jewish community, you stick it out. You don't just leave your wife. And so this situation was really tough. So I'm in Malibu, I'm healed already, and then my dad tells me the day before, you know, at a Shabbat Friday night dinner at my sister's house with everybody around, he says, by the way, just letting you know, I'm leaving your mom tomorrow. Wow. And I the place. This is the news, that's how I get it, right? Jeez. So it created a little bit of a, a tension. So a little bit, yeah, I would say that's... Was, I, I had the wrong philosophy, and I wasn't being... That other work I did was really good, but they had one thing really wrong. They were all about cut off from other people, cut off from people that are hurting. So my sister, I unfriended her on Facebook. I didn't go over for dinner because they were trying to get me to get them to get back together. And they were trying to blame me. They were putting guilt. You send them both to the school and they told them to leave. <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> and so my aunts are blaming me. And so instead oh of God. dealing with it... So was this was after they went to where? Um, so I actually, the, the work that helped heal me, my dad was like, this is great. I want to do it too. Let me better my life. I want to sleep better. I want to have better situation. All of these things he was having issues with. And so he starts the work. And then my mom starts the work. So what's and the work? What's, with what, what do you say? The work. What does that mean? As I said, it started from that Australian I got you. Okay. okay. Australian wife. But as I said, it was perfect for me that I needed to get healed and get introduced to this world. But it, it had its flaws. One of the flaws was, and even, you know, and you start seeing it with them, is they cut off from their brothers or, like, they don't talk to certain people because they teach you, like, friend and foe, right? So if they're a foe energetically, stay away. If they're friends, stay with them. So what oneness helped me when I was in Bali, Indonesia, Punawasu and Catherine and K Moonstar, and I've become friends with K Moonstar, she now moved from Bali, Indonesia to Santa Monica. And so these people, like with like only six of us in the middle of rice fields in this beautiful oneness kind of sacred space that they created, that K and, and, um, and Harmony created, it was so amazing. There was a pool, there was rice fields, there was birds chirping and it was like you're in nature right you couldn't get better setting but what happened was I was put through a process by them all it was was a process just like Tony put me through the process with this kind of energy field and I was able to see that what's going on and what I'm doing to my family and I, how I'm hurt and how what I'm doing is wrong and I'm not talking to my sister it's hurting my parents they kept wondering why aren't you talking I wasn't for months talking to my nephew and my niece and then I got my answer from source, and it said, call right now, call your sister. Right? It's stuff like that. And I call my sister on Viber. She answers, and my message was, it, I, I was hurt because she said, you're going to rot in hell in Malibu on your own. I never want to come see you again because she, she was hurt too. I unfriended her, right, right. cut her off. I didn't want to come see her. And she was hurting because... I didn't see at the time, but I started to see, look, this was her second divorce because her dad, which is my dad, it's my half-sister, left her when she was young, now is leaving her second mom, Edna, and so, and I'm also basically betraying her because yeah. I'm taking their side. I'm saying, this is good. This is the right thing to do. Okay. So bottom line, I apologized to her. I said, I'm sorry that I hurt you. It's wrong of me. I love you. You're so important to me. And she started breaking down. And she started saying, I'm sorry too. And then everything shifted again. Right. So the point is, that's the difference. When you start getting yeah. connected, you start opening so up. So forgiving your people and uh, seeing your place in it as opposed to just cutting them off. Well, meaning my message that I took from it that early on was you got to get in your truth. And it's about... Oneness teaches Sri Bhagavan, the founder, and there's a hundred monks there. And 
basically they're all Indian. One of them is Doug, by the way. He's a oneness being over there, and he's American. So it's, I feel like he needs to change his name. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug is great, by the way. You know what he told me this last time what? when I just went there? Before the, the advanced course started, um, this was like a little over three months ago. I said, you know, Doug, you know, this is amazing, man. I love to see that you're like the only American here. And I said, you know, tell me a little about this. Like he's getting, he's in, he's dating someone. He's living like a real life, right? So it's not like you're a monk and you're celibate. It's not about that, right? And he said, you know what we're doing with you guys here? And I said, what is it? What do you think he said? He says, what is this all about? Why are you even here? What are we doing with you? What do you think he said? <laughs> I guess, um, I don't know. I, maybe something about being comfortable with yourself. Close. Very close. He said, it's all about helping you getting back to being you. Hmm. Getting back to being yourself, your truth. It's all about getting back to being you. Because the truth is we get conditioned at our programmings, just like the viruses in Spy where you got on your computer, you threw it away. Threw it away is like, stay away, right? But what oneness teaches you is about engaging. Engaging in life. Right. Engage in your relationships. Because what happens is you run away what I learned is it keeps following you in different ways, but you got to address it and deal with it. And so instead of running away, engage in life. Yeah. And so that's the message I'm working on being my truth. My truth is not that puffed up, you know, guy that needs to show better than he is an Audi A7 and, you know, he needs to have this amazing home and he needs to show off, right? Yeah. In the Persian Jewish community, unfortunately, a lot of communities, it's about showiness, right? And the problem is I was never happy. But what is my real truth? If I'm really being honest, it's this simple, humble man. And so I have to catch myself because I'm like, wait a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that. That's not my truth. So I'm, a, I'm on a journey, man. I'm figuring this stuff out, too, as we go, man, you know? I'm going to bring this back to the business of, you know, because linking between ourselves and and how it, you know, affects the business. Right. Interconnects with the business. But I need to ask this first, Edmund. You know, someone's, let's say someone's on stage, and they're sitting there in the hot seat, and you're there, and they're, like, asking you that question. How do I heal this, right? Mm -hmm. So what's your advice to that person? Like, we just talked about your story. Right. What should they do right now? Like, someone has, like, cr I mean, I know three people right now at the top of my head that are suffering with these digestive issues and all this other stuff, what should they do? Well, I would I know you're talking about your journey. You're not a doctor. Not, I'll give the disclaimers. You know. As I said, remember as yeah. I said this, is very important. I've seen yeah. a lot of miracles from this other work that I've done yeah. um, to proving doctors wrong. And um, I've done blood work, and, and I, I could prove it to them. I look, look, I've done the blood work. The doctors are saying there's no sign of anything. The, the main thing is if they're open. I yeah. think that's the message. If anyone's open, I'll talk to them. I want to encourage people, free of charge. It's, I want to serve people. I want to encourage people. Look, you have solutions. There's hope. When I was having the struggles, it wasn't that I was bipolar, but what happened was, I went and saw a psychiatrist. I would tell him my story. This is my experience. Because all I could say is this is my experience. If you're open, there's lots of people. Just like you go to the doctor, look, there's lots of different people that can help you. There's lots of coaches. I have a coach, Leilani. She's unbelievable. We met two years ago in, in India at Oneness University. She's tapped in just like me at a very deep level, very psychic abilities. And so she sometimes helps me go deeper as well. We all need help. So I would say, look, if you're open, there's lots of solutions depending on where you're located, depending on your truth. What do you resonate with? If somebody believes in Jesus, I see what you mean. if someone believes in Jesus, I'll connect with their energy and I say, well, his truth is this person connects with Jesus. Why don't you get more connected to Jesus? Mm. Why don't you start connecting and yeah. literally getting your answers and surrendering? I see what you mean. And so, and a lot of it is psychosomatic. So I would ask them, what's going on in your life? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting a divorce. Or I just had a car accident. Or, you know, I just lost all my money. And then you ask them, well, wait a second. What's going on? What, where's your ailment? Oh, my back hurts. And you deal with a lot of back issues, I'm sure, over the years, right? For sure. You know, what have you discovered? When it's not something structural, what have you discovered that has to do with the back? 
and why they have back pain. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of stress that people yes. hold stress in different areas. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but let me explain. You want me to explain about the back? Yeah, yeah. Would that just, help? It's no. so interesting what you're saying because I expected the same answer that you expected when you were on the stage with Esther Hicks. I expected you to say, this is where you should go. This is what you should do. Yeah, exactly. And then you came in back at me with a question of, well, my, my, what worked for me is different from what's going to work for this other person type of thing. Yeah, so the message yeah. here, the lower back, generally speaking, right? Yeah. I connect with energy so I could see things. But I would put people through a process or whoever coach or work that I would recommend. Like Oneness University, there's... It's all around the world. Go to onenessuniversity.org. It's very pure work. That's what I like. Because the problem is I've seen a lot of personal work. And when you mix money with spiritual stuff, sometimes it gets cloudy because that company wants to build their brand. But the issue I had with the other company, they wanted me to be a mentor, that organization. And they wanted me to sell my business. That wasn't my truth. So they were telling me messages all of them sell your business, sell your business. Let's help you sell your business so you become a mentor with us, travel the world, and help people. That's where it gets dangerous. You have to be very careful who you could trust because it's not that they're bad people, but it wasn't my truth to sell my business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so going back to the back, this is a perfect example that you deal with, everybody deals with, you deal with clients with back issues as a chiropractor. You know what? common issues with lower back and I experienced it right when I was in Malibu healed very happy and the, the bombshell of my dad leaving my mom after 40 years and what erupted right I couldn't move I, I couldn't get in my car for a few days it wasn't structural so what happens is the back usually is, is, a, is an area the lower back that usually means we feel we don't we're not supported in our life and a lot of times it also means, it could mean we don't feel we have enough money. So it all could be a financial thing too. You mm -hmm. could even have millions at the bank, but you think, oh, I don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. So the point is, if you don't feel supported, you don't feel you have enough money, or whatever's going on psychosomatic, you could, you could, you could hold it in the back. And you know that because you deal with structural stuff all the time. For me, I would hold it in my stomach, Yeah. Right? which is another brain, by the way, the stomach area. Right? Some people hold it in their head, their mm -hmm. neck, their shoulders. When I tap in and good coaches who are tapped in, they could see where you're holding your stuff. You could tap in and I could see what it is. I could see it's your dad, your issues with your dad, or your issues with your mom, or something happening with your girlfriend, or whatever it is. But everything gets rooted to childhood and how you feel about your parents, and it all starts and stems from the womb. People don't realize it. So when I go deeper in India, you go so deep, I was able to see that at the, at the two, three month mark, when my mom was pregnant with me, I took on programming in the womb because of my mom's stuff that was going on, and she's a great person. She didn't mean any harm, but she had emotions going on, and I attached a meaning that I'm not wanted and loved by my mom. Hmm. And so my programming for my entire life was that. I'm not loved by my mom. And it wouldn't make sense because my mom loves me, she cooks for me, takes care of me, always is there for me. But why was that programming running me is because at the three month mark, I saw it myself when I was going through a process at Oneness University. And that's what happens. You don't have to go to India to do this. You can have a coach, you can have someone help you get tapped in. And I do that stuff as well. What happens is you get so connected and you get your answers and you see it. And I saw that at three month mark, my dad, my mom was having problems with my dad, saw the real truth of my dad, was freaking out about the marriage, was freaking out about me. And it's normal. It's emotional stuff and stress and thoughts were happening in her life. But I picked up on it. The difference is me, I attached a meaning that I'm not loved, that I'm not wanted. Another kid in the womb could have said, my mom's just having trouble with, her, with, with my dad. Yeah. The difference. So, I mean, talk about... You know, this goes into what we were saying with the link between ourselves and how it influences the business, right? Right. Because there. I saw a press release and you were talking, and you, you mentioned the term before we started talking about the rush, right. rush programming. Right. And now it's, it's almost, I wrote down in my notes here, rush versus premium. So it shifted. So exactly. talk about that. Talk about rush, who you were checking the business because of rush and then now. Yeah, that's a good question. So again, just the main message here is that 
and for anyone who's running a business or working for someone who's running the business, it really stems from the top, from the owners. Um, the energy of the owner basically drives the business. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us don't really like, what is this kind of BS? But it gets so deep that I basically didn't realize it until I started seeing it working with my coach Leilani, going through deep processes, going to India. I started seeing that all my life, since I was in the womb, I had this programming of rush, 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 rush program. So I started to see it though. I started to see, oh my God, this has affected me with clients. This is affecting me with my, uh, with my relationships with women, with my friends, with my parents. It's affecting Crohn's disease, everything. I mean, at the end of the day, it affects everything because it was all about rush, 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 rush. And so what, and I looked at it, where did this stem from? Again, it started in that case from the womb. Usually things stem from the womb up until the first maybe four or five years of our age, of our life is usually when most of our programming conditionings begin, just like viruses and spyware. And they run us unless we go and clean it out and we upload the new software. And so that's kind of what I've been doing. So that example of I was attracting, not knowing clients that always were in a rush, created stress. We need this today. We need these labels tomorrow. We have a trade show. Whole Foods needs it. Blah, 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 blah. And I actually thought, this is normal. I right. thought, this is good. So let's put it on our website. Right. As fast as one day. Now as it's as your as it becomes your positioning. We yeah. even had it on our business cards, okay, as fast as 60 minutes. I mean, that's how crazy my rush program was because I knew with the digital printing and our business model – we had a few different companies that we partner up with, our trade partners. One of them is going to get it done same day or one day. You pay a rush fee, we do it. That's our competitive advantage. Little did I know that that was running my whole life. Yeah. Even my relationship with Alexis recently, who I really love, and it was amazing growth for me, who connected me with Punuwasu in India, I mean, in Bali. And he's Indian, by the way. We became friends. Guess what? Basically, I learned that that relationship, I was sabotaging it, and I ruined that relationship all because of my rush program. I had to see it. I would not have known unless I started seeing it. Because she was saying, let's hold off for a few days. You're pushing. You're pushing. You want to move in. You want to do this. You want to see me all weekend. And I, and, and <laughs> I was like rushing, 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 right? And she's like, well, hold on. Slow it down. Put on the brakes. I didn't know. I didn't understand. So now I look back, I'm like, oh my God, every relationship with women, all my friends, I pushed them away, pushed them away. Rush, rush, rush. Because it's like, how can you really be if you're rushing? And so the, the journey now is that we've evolved label choices into a premium label company because I realized going deeper, and this is, has nothing to do with business, this is my own programming, and that's where people need to get, is that premium does not equate with speed. And that's when you screw up because every time you rush, 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 there's no way you could do really amazing design work and pre-press work and give them good looks and print some samples and send it to them. Everything is rush, 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 rush. You can't match colors. You know, it's like you're so rushed that we can't even get the sample of your label to match the color because you need this like tomorrow. Yeah. So now I've noticed as I've shifted, we're attracting clients that give us a month, two months, Three weeks, and it's like, ah, oh, it feels great. Who was your first client with label choices? Oh, good question. Um, I would say the first client that just speaks to me that just ordered right now, we have an order in, um, in house, is Lagore Cosmetics, Lena. And that was an interesting one because that I started the business in 2004. And so that was that year, I think a few months after. Remember, I was running the business out of ABB Labels, my cousin's place. I had Was he okay with you competing with? I mean, essentially. You know, you know it's interesting. I'm so grateful that they were so okay with it. I, I couldn't believe it myself. Right. And the problem is I wasn't even ordering from them for maybe a few orders here and there. Right? right? So, of course, I would be this, feel the same. It's like we have the same address. On Google, it shows up ABB labels and label choices. It's kind of funny at the time. So, but I'm grateful that they allowed that. But see, I needed to move on too. When the, when the health problem arose, by the way, I was freaking out that I was being kicked out by his partner, Albert. So his, his partner didn't want me. So I'm grateful that the cousin was 
going bad for me. But see, it was my comfort level, and that's where everybody needs to know. It's our limitations and our programs and conditioning that drive the business. As we clear these things and fears and you know all these things, like I used to treat our vendors like very ungrateful, you know, and they felt it. I'm looking back at it. I talked to one of our, our trade vendors that prints labels, and um, I talked to her because we were one of their first customers printing on digital presses. It was very new back then, years ago. We were one of the first printing digitally because you didn't need setup fees. The print quality was amazing. And I just spoke with her, and she's, you know, the founder. And I said, you know, I'm sorry. I was so ungrateful back then. Hmm. You know, back then I was like, let me pay you the money, do the job, get it done. And so that was because of my old programming, because I didn't know any better, right? It's like, do it. And so when you go through these processes in Oneness University, you learn to be grateful. Yeah. You learn to understand that maybe me being a little rude is not serving people. Yeah. You look at Donald Trump. You know, he has so much of the programming that I'm working on, you know, not having. <laughs> <laughs> it's like be humble, simple man, right? But I see that side, right. and I'm like, wait a second, I see what's driving him. You know, I see, I see it. It's puffed up, puffed up, right? Look better than you really are, and he's hurt. So he gets hurt. If you look at it, right, he has some great qualities, but he gets hurt. So he, he instead of, right, instead of engaging with the person who's knocking him and saying bad things, he'll destroy him. And, and that's the big basic problem is that he's not understanding that what's really happening is it's a perfect situation that's happening. Why don't you go within and deep and connect and meditate and see what's really going on? What do I need to know? Maybe I need to be more humble. Maybe I need to be more grateful. Maybe I need to treat people better. Maybe I shouldn't cheat and scam people because I need more money. The problem is it's not just him. It's unfortunately our society. It's all about you know, Persian Jewish community, it's all about who has more. But they're all suffering inside. I see them because I'm in this coaching world. They're suffering. Everybody's suffering. But they want to put on a good show, you know. Yeah, yeah. My kids are going to Jewish school $20,000 a year. They're like five years old, seven years old, ten years old. Your kids? No, not my kids. Oh. I'm Oh, I see, I see, I see, yeah, yeah. Family, cousins, relatives, distant people in the community. It goes for every community. Yeah. We're all driven by significance and certainty. So they're telling their kids, be an attorney, be a dentist, be a doctor, because you're going to have certainty and you're going to be a doctor. And look, the problem is nothing's wrong with it if it's your real truth, but right, right. no one's being themselves. And so what is all this work at the end of the day? It's getting back to being you. What is your truth? Why put up a front? Be you. And that's what all this is about. Some people need more of it than others. I needed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. Some people are themselves. And that's the, that's the message. And usually we all resonate with the humble, simple person. Look at Warren Buffett. Speed of trust. People trust him because he's humble and he's a simple man. He drives a used car. He has the same home. Right. But he's in the love of the game. It's the love of the game for him. He's giving away all of his money. He realizes he doesn't want to spoil his kids with all the money. He's basically, he's just in the love of the game. He doesn't need to show off. And so he'll go in and make deals with people because of the trust. And that's the power of business, guys. And Jeremy, you know, speed of trust. When you trust someone, everything moves fast. If you trust your employee, if you trust your vendor, if you trust your doctor, it moves fast. Once you don't trust, you withhold passwords, you withhold bank account, you withhold stuff. But guess what? Everything slows down. So what does Warren Buffett do different than everybody? Everybody else, I'm not sure if I trust you to buy my company for $10 million. So you know what? You hire your lawyers, I hire my lawyers, and it's going to take one year process and thousands and thousands of dollars because nobody trusts each other. But Warren Buffett comes in and says, you know what? I love what you're doing, man. I love your business. I want you to continue running the business. Will you do that for me? Because you're an amazing executive here. Nothing will change, but let's bring it under our portfolio and, and support you. Can we make this happen right now? No lawyers. Sure, done. 
That's the difference, speed of trust. So I mean, your first client, how did you end up getting them? That's a good question. That just shows how we all get support. My brother-in-law, um, uh, John Sitare, he runs a box company called Imperial Box Printing Company in the city of Gardena in Los Angeles. And he had this client, Lagore Cosmetics, who was doing this cosmetics, and they wanted good stuff like foil stamp golds and this and that and clear labels and, and all that stuff. And so at the time, I didn't have an office, like really, like, um, like a real setup at the time. And so um, did I have an office? Time? Oh, there was a period I ran the business out of my home. I remember that now. My parents' home, actually. I remember that. So I think I was actually at that time, maybe right at that moment. I don't remember the details. But anyways, I ended up, he introduced me to them, and I went and met them somewhere at their home or something. And basically, they had like 50, 60 different SKUs of products. And I was like, hey, this is the gold mine, you know? Because back then, I didn't, I, I wasn't doing internet marketing or anything. I wasn't labelchoices.com at the time. So it was such a great opportunity that that referral. And so we landed them and it's amazing that we, they're still a client and they're still ordering. And so they're winding down their older couple, Serge and Lena, but Lagore Cosmetics, good people. And we've met at a trade show and we've met, you know, they're nearby and we've, we've seen each other, but um, it's amazing that they're winding down. They probably want to sell their business. Maybe we don't know, but they, they, you, they, it's perfect opportunity that I had to just like land an account like that through referral. And that's the message. It's like, sometimes it's beautiful. Things just come in the flow, you know? So, so I mean, what's the most amount of labels you're, you've had to produce in one day? Mm -hmm. Like one day. I would just say to give me a sense, like hundreds and thousands. I mean, hundreds of thousands. These presses are super fast. Yeah, we're operating on the newest, latest, and greatest flexographic and digital presses, and so you could easily run millions like these days within a couple of days. So I don't have a number, but I would say some of our clients, like Makeup Geek, which we love and appreciate, um, basically they just recently um, invited us as one of only two vendors. I was the only vendor to actually showed up. And they're they're based in Michigan, and they have they're really amazing makeup company. They do really high end stuff, and we're grateful for that relationship for a few years. And it's great to see them grow. So that's an example of a client where they're doing millions of labels. They have so many different SKUs, so many different products. We do a lot of like foil stamp looking stuff, but it's replica foil to save them money. But it looks amazing. So if you go to makeupgeek.com, you can see they're even selling one of the stickers. Um, and their store, mm. it's stuff that we do. It looks beautiful. It looks like it's real foil stamp, actually, which is amazing. Um, like rose gold stuff, and they do on their blemishes and put their labels and um, their compacts and things like that. But the message is it feels so good to have great clients that you have this relationship, and that's where the new journey is headed. The new journey is firing clients, walking away from clients, premium labels, and clients who pay premium labels, they pay for it. And the most important ingredient is good people like Makeup Geek and Nick and the team there and Nick's ex-wife, that they're just honest, they're upfront, they're kind, they're nice, they're appreciative, they're grateful. That's the type of client that we're, we're attracting these days. Mm. But it had to start for me. I had to become kind. Mm. I have to become grateful. Right, right. You know, I have to do because it's I'm a mirror basically. When I rush, 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 rude, you know, just do this and print it for me, I'm attracting all those type of people. Mm. My, does that make sense, Jeremy? For sure, yeah, hundred percent. So, so that's journey. I love that. So let's talk about some of the labels. I um, made you run around and get get a few. Let's talk. Uh, have you show a few? So if people are listening to this, they should uh, check out you know, the actual uh, video of this. Um, pull out a few that you, maybe start with the uh, the Makeup Geek ones that you have right there and, and show kind of what it looks like and some real world examples. Okay, I only brought a couple things, but at least I could show you a couple examples. Yeah. Like, like this is an example for Makeup Geek where they have their, uh, we do work with a lot of, as you know, two of the main industries is cosmetic and bath and body. Yeah. So this is an example of, um, basically, they want this rose gold to match the black also on their um, 
um, on their products. Yeah. So this, for example, goes on the bottom. But if you go to their website, you'll see the top of it has the the the, the like real foil kind of looks. Yeah. And so this is to replicate it. Now we can easily do this on real foil stamp. We can do this with embossing. But see, then it starts getting very costly when you're running fifty thousand of these or hundred thousand of these. So right. this is right. a great way to keep costs low for clients. This is an example where we print this on a silver chrome stock. It's like a mirror stock. So see the back? Oh, yeah. And so it's basically a way to get this replica look by um, imitating foil. So they want rose, but some want gold. Some want silver of the material. And so we print it as CMYK. We do white underlay. Like, you know how you prime uh, a wall yeah, that's blue, yeah. in this case silver. Yeah. So we put white underlay, hmm. but the areas that we want to look foil, like the, the rose gold parts, that part um, we end up not putting white under it. So it gives that mirror shine look. So we get this effect when we print on holographic stocks and these are more affordable ways, but the why we could get this quality is we're printing on very high end, newest, latest technologies that basically are cutting edge but why we can do it is we don't have to invest in these millions of dollars of technology. It's almost like leasing a car, right? So you're leasing a car um, and you always have the latest and greatest, right? And that's what we're essentially doing, but we don't have to own anything. We team up with our trade partners. It took me 20 years to figure this out. I'm grateful yeah. to just have a handful of partners that are good at what they do. Some are better for digital short run. Some are better for millions of labels. Some are better... Uh, digital technology that's better for white. Like I'll show you, um, this is, oh, here's another example. The same thing for Makeup Geek, right, since we're talking about them. So we just ran this again. This is great because we ran this on a state-of-the-art digital press. So what does that go on? What like Is that on so, a bottle of some so sort? This is an example of um, a palette, basically. Hmm. So. So this goes on a palette, again, the same same silver situation, right, on the back. So we do a lot of their small little labels as well. They're like half an inch. And why we could do these half inch and print such small fonts is because of the technology we print on. Because we can get as small as one or two point font. Literally, you can get such small font, you need a microscope, which is crazy. But it just shows you how technology has advanced so much in printing. What's great about us is we just need to partner up with the right people, which is what we do. That's what's exciting. One of the other client is um, Sugarfina. Oh, here's another one. So this is top secret. This is an example that they they need to seal their black matte box, right? Hmm. And so this is. I thought you were saying this is top secret. I'm like, well, don't share it, but it actually yeah. says top secret on. The so this one, yeah. what they're doing is they're sealing their matte box that they put their stuff in that they ship to clients. Yeah, yeah. And so we we went through a few phases to making sure that this doesn't scratch off because they want it to be matte. See, if we laminated this, lamination is a plastic layer, but the problem with the lamination it split. protects it better, but it doesn't stay on and close it and seal. Yeah, it. yeah. So what we did was we upgraded them to a special varnish that protects it better. Mm. So it's more of like a bulletproof varnish. So it mm. protects them from scratching when it gets shipped in as well. But it's the same process, you could see. And then what we did was we upgraded them to a special adhesive, still staying with the silver chrome, but it's a special adhesive that stays on better. Mm. So this is the type of stuff that we do for our like clients. And, and when you solve problems and you know I listened to one of your interviews and someone said, all I do is solve problems. Well, that's what it is, right? Find the problem and solve it. Right. And we're doing that every day because yeah. there's problems they don't even know are problems. We see a client and says they're, they're doing juice and they have a hang tag on the on, – because we do a lot of holistic stuff in yeah. the organic press juice space. Yeah. The hang tag basically looks like crap. They print a little white label for black ink and they put it on there and – one juice is twelve ninety five. Another juice is eight ninety five. Another juice is ten ninety five. So guess what's happening? They're being cheap about it, and it's actually not only hurting their brand and the look because once the tag comes off, you don't even know what you're drinking. Right. Is it kale or is this orange juice? I'm drinking this stuff in a glass bottle. I don't even know what I'm drinking, right? But there's another problem. The owner explained to me that there's a theft problem. 
Mm. So we said, let's solve this problem. What is this hang tag business that you're doing? People are switching hang tags. To uh, interesting. Right? So let's come up with a solution. Let's do a clear label. It's going to look amazing like we're doing. So here's an example of a clear label for a client doing, let's see. Again, I didn't bring much here. I came in the conference room, one of the small conference rooms. So let's see. Oh, yeah, here, I'll show you a, a great clear label. Here's an example of a clear label, right? So mm. this is stuff that's matte. So a lot of our clients like the matte look, right? And this happens to have a foil as well in it. Do you see the shimmeriness? Mm -hmm. And you see yes. the kind of quality of our printing. So what we could do is now we could print digitally with no setup fees, fast and easy, all same day, finish it with equipment with foil and embossing. Here's more clear. Look, check this stuff out. How amazing is this? What is that for? This is for a cosmetic company. Oh, nice. um, but look at the print quality now. Check it out. It's called sandwich printing. Look at the other side. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. And then you could see also here, you could see as foil stamping, silver foil stamping. So this is a client. You see, we want to promote these holistic companies on our social media and our website now. As we're evolving, we want to start promoting these little guys that are doing good things. Here's a 22-year-old kid. He comes and he's selling his stuff online. His company is called Cannabinade. He comes in with a Word document. He graduated from Cal State Fullerton. Great energy. You know, we pick up a call. He's local. We say, why don't you come in? Where in the past, I would say, look, this guy just wants a few thousand labels. We don't have time to see them. Right. But that was my old program. Now it's like, how do we give these people love? Yeah. This guy is actually doing a CBD, which is a more therapeutic way to basically like use marijuana. So I would normally say, wait a second, why are we going to promote this stuff? But the guy has a good purpose. His ingredients are all organic. We even printed a back with his ingredients. He has nutrition facts. He's doing it real legit, right? So his product is all organic. And so he comes in and he says, I want this lemon to look like a lemon. Hmm. So our design team, we have people like Victor on our team who are full-fledged design and pre-press pre guys. Stephanie on our team who literally did design work at Whole Foods. So we're literally putting our a whole energy in this holistic space. Mm. How do we help these guys grow? So literally like a couple hours, we really created the lemon. We cleaned up the kind of the, the pot. <laughs> right. Right. And then we cleaned it all up and he and we gave him, we sent him samples, printed on the digital one point two million dollar label press. We printed samples for him cut to size on two stocks. Cause he said he's gonna hand apply it. We said, look, because you're hand applying it, always know they're going to bubble. Right. But he can give you the super clear. See, this stuff is super clear. See this stuff? This is super. It's the most no-label look. Yeah. This stuff, if you peel it off, has a little bit of fogginess in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's but pretty clear, though, yeah. It's clear, but when mm -hmm. you put it on, it looks good. But the problem is the super clear is not good for machine application. I mean, it's not good for hand application. And these guys are small. We deal with a lot of these smaller guys. We want to help them grow. So we gave them two stocks, test out which one is better for hand application. Mm -hmm. One's in the middle range, which is more closer to super clear. And so he tests it out and he says, I want this one. And he was so happy. Now he's excited. You go look at his like Instagram. He's this 22 year old kid. He was having celebrities drink his product, his lemonade with CBD, because it's therapeutic. It's like, you know, you know all about CBD, right? Yeah, yeah. So nowadays, you know, there's these holistic companies, but they're doing it the right way. This guy's doing it the right way. It's not about to just get high, you know. It's and lemonade it's, with the stuff with the CBD in it, right? In it, yeah, yeah. six ounce. So we we had him bring in the bottle. Let's put the clear samples on. Let's shoot, put other samples of different stuff. So we showed him, we showed him stuff like this, right? This is using the same silver stock, right? We can get these very unique kind of looks. We showed him stuff like this, right? See the level of small. This is three point fonts printing. You so see what is that? What's the this uh, is the foil? This is the same. This is the same kind of silver stuff. Yeah. Right. We show them stuff like this. We're like, look, we can do this kind of stuff. This is the same replica stuff, right? You see how cool this is? Yeah. There's only a handful of people in the, in the world that are doing this with labels. It's basically using software and technology. This is the same thing. Look, same silver backing, 
but it's using the latest and greatest digital printing coupled with the print head, coupled with software to manipulate the artwork, and then we add more color spectrums to it. So we're adding literally, we're adding CMYK plus a whole full spectrum of colors plus the software plus the print head, and you can imagine why there's why there's only a few people can afford this stuff. We can do it because our business model allows us to work with these trade guys. That's what's exciting about what I do. No limits. Remember, going back to the Bacchus Energy guy drink, right? That was the issue I had. Right, right, yeah. So what was that other one you you showed? It was Nerdy. What was that company, uh, brand? Nerdy Juice is a client. Um, they do, um, they do uh, vape, basically. Hmm. So, but again, that's an example of um, we want to put much more energy going forward. We appreciate of them. They're happy. One thing that why they're happy, by the way, we ran that again on the highest end digital press. But one thing that makes them really happy was we printed samples for them with different looks. And one of them, the sample was basically this look and the green one, which gave it much more of a foily look. So we printed it with the same mm. CMYK. Looks nice, yeah. With the with with um, the silver that they wanted, but we showed different looks. That's the beauty of what we're doing. We could print sheets of two or three sheets, give them different looks, and they're like, "Oh my God, they all look great!" But we want to go with this one. We're gonna pay more because this foil, this red, and the one you send the green look amazing. So how do we look better than everybody else? And that's what we're doing. How do we how do we take their vision and their brand and basically align? align their clients and how do they pop off the shelf so yeah. one of our other clients is Sugarfina we've had their we we started with them a few years ago they came to Santa Monica office where we're at same same thing we do all these beautiful things they work with Ritz Carlton and Nordstroms and they do a um, they it's amazing that Whoopi Goldberg went on the Tonight Show and gave the gift boxes of Sugarfina to um, to him and and they started eating the chocolate that had bourbon in it and so they come to us for their high-end stuff. Here's Sugarfina, very simple, beautiful stuff, print quality. So you see the level of detail that we do? Mm. And sometimes they come to us, again, rush mentality, which we understand, but we're here to help our good clients. They say, we need this in two days, right? We just did a job for Too Faced Cosmetics for them, right? And we had to print it in two days. We printed samples in a day or two. So their client got it, they got it, they got the two different looks, they said we want to go with this one. That's how we operate. Yeah. So we're we're all about serving our clients and meeting their deadlines, but like coming up with solutions that like nobody else is doing. Like here's an example. This stuff is exciting stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see. See, this is made out of stone. So we own a domain. I just bought 20 domains like a month ago. One of them is called Tree Free Labels. We own eco-friendly labels. Tree Free. Tree Free Labels. This is Tree Free. So this is made out of stone. 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 And look, and this is not only made out of stone, but it has a matte varnish and it also has foil. Do you see the foil? Yeah. And so we have clients that want not only the 100% recycled, but we're trying to move them towards let's do the things that are tree free that are better for the environment. So we're evolving as well because very few companies really are set up well for this. So we're dealing with the paper companies directly. Where I went to the Label Expo, which is the largest label show in the world, just last October in Brussels. Mm -hmm. So you know, is it I, always there or? No, they have them all over. They have one in Chicago coming up actually um, right. in September. All right. Well, call me up when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. We got to we gotta connect. And I got a place for you anytime. Um, Ocean View, my place. I got an extra room. I would be honored that anytime you come and you could stay. I have a place for you. That sounds stay. great. I would be honored. I'd yeah. Be. Likewise. Santa Monica, have you ever been to Santa Monica? No. Never been. Beautiful. One of the best cities, in my opinion. I've traveled the world. Um, not only because my family's here, but I walk to my office. My office is literally four and a half blocks away. We literally, like right here, like you could see, we just walk right out. I don't know if you could see. Yeah. You walk right out there, and you walk one block. You see you're on Ocean Avenue. 
Two blocks away, you see the Santa Monica Pier. We're on 2nd Street. One block away, you have 3rd Street Promenade and the Santa Monica Mall, Nordstrom's and everything, where Sugar Fina is being sold there as well. Then you go, you go down the stairs and the bridge, and you're on the beach. And so I literally live on 2nd Street. I just literally walk forward. I mean, that's what I mean by changing lifestyle. I used to, live, I used to work out of downtown, yeah. smoggy, no good energy, nothing good to eat. And so working with Lauren Slocum, I'm grateful to her who is, you know, who started Life Mastery in Fiji, which is all about colonics and cleansing and wheatgrass and their version of being healthy, right? Yeah. And mind and body. And she helped me realize I got to move out of that damn place. And where do, should I be? Look, your family's in Santa Monica. You were raised in Santa Monica since sixth grade. Yeah. Why don't you get an office in Santa Monica? So it's been almost five years and it's the biggest blessing. So... That's an example of getting out of your comfort, psychosomatic, meaning it was stressful, driving, dealing with all that. I didn't have my own offices. It was sharing ABB. We had clients come in. They're like, what's ABB labels? You know, you're limited, right? But yeah. that was because I needed to go deeper. I had to work on myself. What other labels, Edmund, do you have around there? Any others that you wanted to show? Um, yeah, I'd love to. Um, you could see these examples of beautiful labels, right? Um, obviously this is full color printing with the gold foil on the top. Um, you could see this is more embossing and foil stamp. This is stuff very few people do, but we love this premium stuff and we want to help people. What do people that. use that for? What is that? Is that label, but you could just see. Is that for a wine or? This is for a wine. Okay. So this, if you feel it, you feel that kind of like it has an emblem feel that's embossed. Mm. Right. And then, um, this is like the super clear we were talking about, remember? I'm gonna peel it off. So this is an example of the same, right? This is rotary screen, so if you touch it, you could feel it, right? And this is how we can get whites to look pure white. Mm. Because the problem with regular white ink, and we get into this stuff, that's what I love about it, because not a lot of people get into it. We could print very high quality, but it's also affordable. These are not, if you're starting to do good quality quantity stuff, you're not getting extravagant, you know, just to, all depends on how we set things up. So we get smart with our clients. We say, okay, you have 10 variations of this wine, but we don't want you to have to pay tooling fees and set up for every yeah. single one of these. So why don't we just keep everything here the same, right? But, but we just basically, like, and we keep this the same, we just change this out. Mm -hmm. And so when someone's on a budget, we say, let's come up with a better solution. We right. could save you thousand dollars, but just don't change this. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I mean, how do people find you? Do they find you like uh, wine companies find you through the bottle manufacturer that helps them with the bottle, or do they find you directly? Mostly directly, but these okay. days, look. Back in the day, I was strictly online. We were labelchoices.com. We mm. were one of the first, and that's where you said you found our like news something written up about us. Yeah, or press release, yeah. Yeah, that was basically, back in the day, rush mentality. I was a one-man army working out of my Beverly Hills home at one point. Um, and I was like, how do I do this as a one-man army? And that's where the limitation was because mm -hmm. I needed to grow, but I took a route of how do I automate the business. And that's when I became labelchoices.com, had the back end with upload artwork and pricing and design online. And so, but then I got depressed and I'm like, no one's calling. I'm not even talking to anybody. Like labels are coming out crappy. People are designing their candle. They don't even add lamination to it. And I'm like, how the hell is this working out? And I was the low price guarantee guy. So if you ever go to the Wayback Machine, you'll see low price guarantee. That was my game, but that's all I knew at the time, you know? So what does the team so, look so like? So now yeah. how we're manifesting is, I'm manifesting the business. I'm getting out of the way. I'm shifting, and as I'm shifting, miraculously clients are showing up. Nobody will believe this stuff, but it's true. I'm shifting, you're showing up. I'm connecting, you show up and say, let's do an interview. I'm shifting, there's another talk that I did last week to inspire teens. You know, she said, hey, uh, can you come and talk? Like, I'd love to. I'm shifting, this client calls up and says, you know, we'd love to work with you. Like, okay, great. How did you find out about us? Google. Then someone else refers us, and then this happens. But the thing is that's happening is I'm shifting. 
as I'm shifting and I'm putting out that energy to the universe, I'm noticing things are shifting. I don't have to try as hard. It's like flow. Right. When I have to try and it's like I'm doing it, right, Google AdWords. And I was paying $3.50 a click years ago for embossed labels, you know, these embossed labels I'm showing you. Yeah. And I was blowing like $150 for the day, right? On a, but you know what? Again, it was all part of the journey. Like I needed to learn, right? Now it's like ten dollars a click. So, you know? I mean, what's the team look like now? So the team That's, is your space looks really big. What is it? Your space looks really big. Well, this is great because this allows us to be humble, the humble, simple man that I am, and allows me to have great energy for me and my team. Is this is a co-working space? Amazing. Like Coconut Girl Ice Cream, one of our clients, she was out of this space. Mm. And we're helping her. She, she's an Air One Natural Foods, which is, has really high standards. We want to help her get into Whole Foods. We just Our social media just promoted her actually the other day. So our team basically like is really extended and powerful because I outsource really well. Yeah. I give up control. I say, look, you're this amazing web design firm that I just hired. Our current website was from a company in Malaysia that I went and met with, Ronin. And so that was when I was on my journey to Bali and to you know, Malaysia before I went to India to do the deep work. And so that was great for that time. But rush mentality, rush, rush, you know, I rushed everything. And so now we're working on a whole new award-winning site that's simple, humble, very SEO-driven, but speaks to what we're about, which right. is attracting clients that are nice, they're honest, they're upfront, they value premium, they pay premium, and it's going to focus very much in the holistic community. In those areas from cosmetic bath and body to the second area of food and beverages, like those juice labels that we do and these cosmetics that are organic. And So we're grateful that we've had clients like Sugarfina and Makeup Geek and seen their growth. And where Makeup Geek now, there were a couple years ago, 5,000 fastest growing ink magazine. Now they had their gala, their 500 fastest private. And we're so grateful that we might have had even a little to do with that, right? Now let's help these holistic companies, these guys that don't have the manpower that I've been seeing for over 10 years in the industry, the natural product industry. Yeah. I've been seeing Time and time again, I've gone to the Natural Products Expo in Anaheim. Have you ever been to the one? I'm, I want to go. I've never been, no. There's the Expo East coming up if you're guided to go. Um, that's in Baltimore. I think it's in Baltimore. But that, the biggest one is in Anaheim, which is near Disneyland, an hour mm -hmm. from us. And I've gone to that thing probably at least 10 times. Mm. And you see these little guys coming up, and they have great clean products. And I connect with energy now since I've been connected. Just like, you know, you know muscle testing, right? Mm -hmm. Lauren Slocum taught me muscle testing. Hey, is this good for me? Is it not? Is this supplement right? Or should I get a Porsche or not? All this kind of crazy <laughs> at the time. I've right? never heard people muscle testing a Porsche, oh, but okay. I swear to God she did. And yeah. she's like, no, 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 no. That's not for you. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, but now what, what happens is we could connect. We could connect. We have all of our answers. It's just believe that there is that possibility. If you could believe that there's that possibility, one of the ways that people believe is, like I believed, was when the gentleman from Australia read everybody. Sometimes some people need that. Yeah. Sometimes they need to go through an experience. The best is go through an experience. Show up. If you're guided, hey, what is Oneness University? Go to their website. Ask me. Email me. Connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. Um, Pinterest. The point is, I'm an Edmund Tour body. Connect with me. If there's any way, let's all help each other. Let's raise each other's consciousness. Let's raise each other's vibrational level. And it starts from awareness. Once you're aware, you're free. That's the key. It's about awareness. So, Edmund, you know, there's a huge power in outsourcing, right? Yeah. So, what else do you outsource? So, the. Everything. We outsource everything. Everything. So, Stephanie, we outsource to her as an example, as a designer. Because, you know what, if I wanted to bring her in, she's in San Diego, which is two and a half hours away. You know what, I found her on LinkedIn. We connected, I connected with her energy, I was guided. I was like, wow, this is an amazing designer. We're working with companies that want to be in Whole Foods, that are in Whole Foods. They're doing organic, they want to get in all these places, Mother Sprouts, 
And you know what? She's still doing work for Whole Foods right now to this day, but as, a, as an independent contractor. Right. But she designed for Whole Foods in Whole Foods. But that didn't matter. It's about results. So we gave her a project. One of her clients, Marina, is QDNA. She has 112 different supplement lines. Mm-hmm. Very high quality stuff. And so what she's doing is we've been doing all of her artwork. And I ha- we, we basically we had a team member um, working on it but was taking up so much of our resources, many, many hours, like 86 hours we put in this artwork wow. because – there was all these pictures that we went and bought, we helped her to buy, from flowers to jasmine to all of these things. Every single one had a flower or something, some herb. And so we helped her go to go on iStock and, and, and let's buy these. And so, but all these clippings and the hours it took. So it was perfect. Stephanie, can you help us out? Let's try you out. Great. Now, why don't you help us? You did an amazing job. Now help us with Nutty But Nice. Um, Sheila, we've been doing her labels for a while and she sells, was selling at Farmer's Market and now she's selling at Erewhon Natural Foods, it's local, and she wants to get in Whole Foods, she wants to get in these places. But we said, look, we're printing your labels and the print looks good, nutty but nice, but the problem is your artwork sucks. I had to straight up tell her. I said, look, if you're serious, come to the office. Really? We never met, you know, a lot of these clients, you never beat them, right. but I said, you're local, come in. At least pay $500. I'll help you out. I'm not trying to make money on the art. And then we Zoomed her in on the call with Stephanie. Victor, who's on the team, who's my one of my right hands, basically. He's not only designed, pre-pressed. And he used to work at ABB Labels for years. So we've been like friends and we worked together for over 10 years. He left as an independent contractor. And with my cousin's blessing, he's been with me. You know? Right, right. So the point is, we were sitting in the conference room. We had Stephanie on Zoom. She was here. Stephanie introduces herself to to Sheila, and we're all in it together, branding her stuff. Let's get this thing done. What do you want? Here are your one, two, three choices. Let's step up your game now because you're competing against this other person who doesn't even have a label. This other person is doing the product but is not as clean as yours. You're doing this dip. Everybody needs to try this dip. It's sprouted almonds. It's, it's natural, it's local, it's fresh. I tried your stuff, it's good, you have Chipotle and this and that, but you're not being seen. Right. You need to step up your packaging. She's like, I agree. $500, I'll agree. And, that, and I understand, but a big company will spend thousands of dollars. Yeah, more than that, yeah. Because we're, we're reinventing her design, her packaging, her logo. And you know what? We're happy to do that for 500 bucks because we're not trying to make the money off of it. It's let's build that relationship. Let's help them grow. Now we're going to promote her. She's right. excited about that. But I told her, not, we're not going to promote your current label. Once you get the new label, right? right we're, we're still in the process. Right. Once you get it, put it on the, on the product, um, then we're going to start promoting it. But we help clients like this. It's now getting to a different level. Before I was like, I don't want to help these small clients out. Now it's like, how can we help you? Yeah. I said, can you get organic local? She said, I can't find organic. In California, there's no such thing anymore. You gotta go to Spain and it's so expensive. And everything is about fresh and local. So I found the source that Erewhon uses in Santa Monica Co-op. And they buy this guy who's local. It's organic, local, and raw. Because they pasteurize the almonds. I turned her on to this company. I said, buy from them. Now we could put organic on the label it's going to be better for everyone energetically, mm. and it's going to be a cleaner product because Erewhon um, makes their own press juices out of those almonds. Mm. Figured it out. And so and then I said, why don't you keep putting these labels on by hand? Let's help you with machine application. Please, how do I go about it? Here's some companies. Yeah, how does that work? Oh, so you can help. There's some companies that uh, – t- talk about the process a little bit, like something like that. Like does someone – they, um, I guess have a – agreement with a company that has bottles and those you have to send the labels to that company to apply them I'm very impressed that you want to know this stuff most people don't want to know I hope this is not boring people but let's if, if this yeah is not, I think it's people the, you know the people who are interested in this are actually doing it right or looking for doing it better I yeah. find this fascinating so 
Yeah, so it's a good question. A lot of these smaller businesses don't know. They just put on by hand and they don't know or they're limited. So what we encourage our clients to do is, depending on what stage they're at, if they're doing 100 labels, like this client, I'll tell you, Baby Clydesdale is a client. We really love them. They're always honest. They're always upfront. They're always appreciative. And I just recently went and visited them. You know, again, they're in the holistic food space. Yeah. They have such a natural hot sauce product. And so I love their sriracha. I even bought it from them, you know. And they're a couple. And David Mead, we connected on Facebook as well. So it's like that personal friendship now. It's like I see what their world is. The guy's a musician. He has a band. He's engaged to Josephine, you know, uh, Justine, sorry. And so, like, I just met them at the show. I saw them hustling. And they're using our labels. And they say everybody loves it. And so that's an example of a clear label. We use newest technology. Let me see if I brought it here. If I did, I'll show it. Um, oh, here it is. So here's an example of, if you go to and check out Baby Clydesdale Hot Sauce and Google it. So it's a very simple. The color of the sriracha, for example, is red, right? And so this is a very simple label. It's a standard clear. They're putting it on by hand. But you can't tell right now. It doesn't look that white. But when you put it on the red or the green or the yellow type of, like, for example, the sauces that they have, yeah. it really pops. It pops out, but yeah. This is, this is UV inks, white. But this is amazing. There's only a handful of presses in the world now that are digital, and that's what this is. It's a digital UV inkjet press. How amazing is that? That mm. means the traditional way to get white to look good yeah. is you have to put it on a screen press. Yeah. And I'll show you some of those. A screen press means you're paying a lot of money to get the white to look really white, and you get the feel. So if you touch it, you have a little feel to it. And so this is actually run on a UV inkjet digital press. Guess what? We can do it because we don't have to invest in these millions of dollars. So we can run UV inkjet digital. We could run liquid toner technology digital. We can run all of these different technologies, and we're not limited. Same goes with screen printing. There's all different companies, and every company has different finishing equipment. So why is this powerful? No setup fees. None. And we run it right then and there. Like, hey, we have the show. We need it in a few days. Done. No, the traditional guy is going to say, oh, we have to put it on our flexographic and make plates, and we can't get level of detail like this. It's too small. You know, all of this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right? No problem. That's why we're called label choices, by the way. That's why even when I started my company, for whoever's starting it, I wanted to get the domain as the same as the company name, as same as the toll-free number. Right. That's why we have 877 label choices, because it was all premeditated, by the way. And choices is because of my pain that I realized I'm stuck with one manufacturer, with one old school press, right. and I don't have the candy store that I could choose from. And that's what we give our clients, but we make it easy. They don't have to choose. We just give them a couple choices based on what we know they need. Yeah. This is it. What do you want? Let's do it. So, Admin, does that person have to hand apply or can they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, a good thing you pay them up. So, they're currently hand applying these. But we're talking to them and we're moving them in the direction of educating them that it's going to be easy to get it machine applied. Mm -hmm. So with them, we're, they, the good news is they actually might have already machine applied it because I asked, do you have anything? They said, we did buy a press. Uh, we did buy a machine applicator from someone. It was a used one, mm -hmm. but we don't know if it works. So we ended up setting it up the right way because I asked these questions. And again, you know, all of it comes down to, you know, because you care. See, when you have the right intent and you want to serve, everything happens. But if you're greedy and you're all about me and how do I build my brand and how do I make money and it's all about, you know, me, 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 you're coming from a different place. So that message here is go within and be honest with yourself. Why are you doing what you're doing? Now, I've come to realization that my mission is way, way more powerful than my old mission and why I'm running label choices. Mm -hmm. We get to different levels, big time. And so now I'm seeing things differently. That's why I'm helping these smaller guys out. These guys who 
are going to get crushed by the bigger guys if they don't put invest in marketing and innovation and, yeah. and distribution. They're going to get crushed because there's two things that run a business and we tell all of our clients. Very big. Two things. Number one, innovation, and you know this, and number two is marketing. And the biggest problem small businesses have is they're not innovative enough and they don't market enough. And so that means business fails. And that's the reason why Apple and Google and Facebook and these guys, because they, they excel in these two areas big time. They continue to innovate and they continue to market. And the problem with most product companies, after five years, we, we call them up. Where are you at? What's going on? Oh, I'm still working at Kaiser Permanente. And I'm like, but you have a really good spa product. It's like, you told me all about it. It was from the Dead Sea and, you know, all this stuff. Yeah, but um, my husband did this and that. And at the end of the day, they go nowhere because they're not in The innovation is the product. Sure, maybe they have a good product and it's innovative in some way. The Dead Sea, you know, nobody has it or whatever. But the problem is they forget what I, why I failed in those other two businesses also is because I didn't market and I didn't distribute. So it doesn't matter how good that energy product was. If I didn't know how to get into the stores and get in the right hands, what's the point? So we've learned that lesson over the 20 years. Not over 90%, what's the statistic you've heard in terms of failure rate of businesses? You know, you've been dealing yeah, with Yeah, whatever is like... 90% within five years or something. I don't know if it's true or not, but I I would say it's it's even it depends on what you mean by failure. It's like a kid, right? Yeah. Did you raise your kid well? So you have a kid who's spoiled, who treats people bad, is rude to the dad and the mom, and you could say I have a kid, but you could say I have a business, but is it even supporting me? So right, if right. You, if we're really honest with ourselves. Even if a business survives, it's hanging on because it's not innovating, it's not marketing, it's slowly dying. So the statistics are true. The first year, two years, there's a good amount that fail, and then they say within five, ten years, like 90% plus fail. So it depends on who you ask and what statistic, but it's a high number, right? So you wonder why the hell that's the case. There's another reason I want people to know. I brought up this before. What is your purpose? What is your truth? What are you on this planet for? Right? Yeah. I love being an entrepreneur. That's me. But that's not for everyone. Yeah. People want to be what they're supposed to be, a doctor or attorney or a lawyer, entrepreneur or artist. What is your truth? What juice is you? What have you put here for? What is the universe saying? And the message is go with that flow. And so there are three types of people. If you like, I'll explain if you think this will help. Yeah, go ahead. Easy category that helps. So there's the entrepreneur, there's the manager leader, and then there is the artist. So this is a very easy, of course, connecting with energy is your truth. But for most people, they could digest these three types of people. Now, we could be all three things. We could be even a lot of two things. But what do we want to do is we want to decide which one are we really, if we're honest with ourselves, mm -hmm. which one are we really? And we got to look in the eyes, Jeremy, every one of us, we've got to say, Am I really an entrepreneur? Am I really a manager leader? Or am I more really an artist? And so to explain what that is, it's very simple. An artist is anyone who has a craft that someone pays them to do. Right? right? You're a chiropractor, so you could be in between an artist or an entrepreneur. If you have your own practice, right. of course you're an entrepreneur, but you're yeah. also an artist. Yeah. So you could be a little bit of both. But the question is, which one are we really? So the artist is basically like, who would you say is an athlete that is super successful and makes a lot of money because they're good at, at the sport? Who would you say? Yeah, LeBron James. I mean, LeBron James. Yeah. Now, does LeBron James right now, does he run a business? If you're honest with yourself, why does he I mean, he no, he's a brand himself, but he, I mean, he's not running a business. He's yeah. funny, but why does he make Not that money? I know of. I mean, maybe he does. Is he an artist? Yeah. Meaning his artistry, his craft is basketball. Right. Someone's artistry is sales, right? You look at people like the Chet Holmes of the world and the Zig Ziglar's of the world and the Tony Robbins. If you're so good at what you do, and Brian Tracy, I've seen him live. I saw you're connected with him also on LinkedIn. You look at these people, they have their brand and what they're good at. People pay them to come. Teach me sales, right? Chet Holmes was 
He wrote The Sales Machine. He's all about how do you land the top 100 fortune companies. I saw him live. I hung out with the guy before he passed away. And poor guy, he died because of illness. Young. This is the, what I want to avoid. I mean, I suffered. Why should other people suffer? Right? That's the problem. He Very successful, but he passed away. What good is that? Right. And you've got to take a look at that. What was it? Everybody wants to say cancer, cancer. I asked Kumarji. Kumarji is the top monk over there in India. He's the closest to Bhagavan, um, who's founded Oneness University. And I said, okay, you guys talk about psychosomatic is a lot of the reasons why people you know, have diseases and stuff. And I said, what are the other reasons why, you know, like that people have cancer and all this stuff? He said, karmic reasons. So this is a whole other thing that people need to also know. We're going on a different st strand, but karmic, mm -hmm. reasons, karmic reasons, it's like stuff you can't control in your current life. It could be your ancestry. It could be stuff that happened. It could be your grandfather is mad at you, you know, because you dishonored him. It could be so many things and he passed away mm. and he's hurting you in your current life. This stuff, if you told me this like three years ago, I would think, come on, this is bullshit. <laughs> come on, man. So the point is, there's a lots of other things that are affecting us and our current present life, but we could control a lot of that. You don't have to worry about that. But when you go through processes, I, I'm actually a medium as well. I connect with energy. I could connect with people who passed. So, and you see a lot of those people who have mediumships. Do you believe in mediumship yourself, personally? I, I've heard stories of personal friends that, you know, you can't explain it away type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly why I said, if yeah. anyone's a doubter, just go experience it. Just experience it. Just be there. Have someone give you a reading who's connected. Not some BS psychic or something. And not just any psychic. I hung out with a psychic who had a television show, and we actually hung out. She came to a oneness event to Malibu, and she wasn't here. She had a show. I watched her episodes and everything. She's a medium. But you know what I noticed? I noticed that there's different levels. You could be a psychic, just like the work that helped me heal my Crohn's, but you're connecting at the thought level, the fear level. So you could read people's minds, but the problem is it's not the highest consciousness. That's why I encourage people, be very careful. Be very careful if you're going to go in that space. Make sure it's pure and make sure they're helping you get connected, not just give you messages. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's just my experience. So and we got to tracked. Yeah. No, you know, like that's why I don't – I do research and I have the questions I want to ask but I kind of let it flow to where, where it goes, you know, because you just, I would never have expected this is where the interview went, which is cool. Um, you know, I appreciate your time. I mean, this has been hugely valuable. Um, I have one last question for you. Um, but first, I want to point people towards where should they check out online? You know, labelchoices.com. They can check out labelchoices.com. If your company, website, anywhere else that they should check out online. You know, I, I say that my, my mission, as, as, as we didn't really get into, but you're kind of getting the idea, yeah. it's a higher purpose. And I've been shown that I'm supposed to utilize label choices to serve. Because most people in business are not spiritual or like gurus or like monks. So I meant to look, I'm a business guy, and this is my experience. So if I could be encouraging Please add me. We're all here to help each other. Connect with me on, on LinkedIn on my personal page. Look me up, Edmund Torbati, E-D-M-O-N-D. -E Last name is Torbati, T-O-R-B-A-T-I. Look me up on Twitter. Look me up on um, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest. And, and if you like to connect with our company pages, connect with them as well um, under Label Choices, Label, L-A-B-E-L, -E Space Choices, C-H-O-I-C-S. And... Any way we can all connect. Maybe I could turn you on to something. Um, maybe Oneness University doesn't resonate. I'll tell you some other things. Maybe some coaches that could connect. Because I've worked with some coaches that are very connected that help you go deeper than just the standard Tony Robbins coach. Because that's all mind stuff. So love to connect with anyone. Also, our company number is 877. Call me anytime at the office. 877 Label Choices. That's 877-522-3524. Um, eight seven seven five two two three five two four, and I'm I'm extension seven zero one. So, um, 
any way we could all connect. Um, that's that's my mission. I meant to help people raise their consciousness and um, any way I could be an influence. Um, I'm learning every day myself. Man. Yeah, it's yeah. a journey. I'm in I'm in first grade level of of this stuff. Honestly, literally, I, I I'm humbled because the stuff I see, the miracles I'm seeing, the lift different levels of consciousness with even Oneness University. Because I'm meant to go back for like on an 18 year journey, so I'm gonna be going back again soon and continue to evolve. So and I'm mm -hmm. learning from all everybody. So if anybody has anything they want to teach me, please connect with me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I uh, I appreciate you being so open. Because some of the stuff you talked about is, I mean, you say it now because you probably dealt with it for a long time, but it's right. it's really difficult, tough stuff, yeah. you know. Sure. Um, so sure. thank you. Um, of course, thank you. Thank you for opening space and and asking amazing questions as well. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, my last question, Edmund, is I know you're here to serve, mm -hmm. and who are some of the up and coming brands, holistic brands that you're working with that we should highlight? I know you mentioned Nutty but Nice, um, so I figured maybe you mention a few and what they're what okay. they're doing. Well, currently the ones we're working on, I showed you a few of them, and we talked about a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is I have this sample. Even simple companies like One Man Armies, like um, HeartSpring, for example, they, she does very clean, natural lip balm, and she came and visited us, and mm -hmm. she's local in Santa Monica. So you could see made in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. She puts on her own label, but very clean stuff, very basic stuff. Um, that we're working with. Um, we just started working with Moon Juice as well. Um, Moon What's Juice that? does like organic pressed juices. And if you go to like Erewhon Natural Foods, they have all kinds of stuff. Um, the great thing is Gabby um, is coming to see us tomorrow again. Um, they've given us a couple projects because they've been working with another label company. And it's understandable. What happens is somebody works with somebody for many years. They match their colors. They're comfortable with them. Um, so it's always, I'm very grateful when someone starts opening up and says, you know what, let's see, maybe you could help us more. And so that's a stage with even Moon Juice. They have so many different types of products that are organic and natural, and hopefully we could help them. So they're printing on craft stock and estate type stocks, but we want to show them different looks. Let's step up your game because their client, again, they want premium labels and hopefully they pay premium. We don't know. We've only done a couple jobs with them. And so... If they're willing to, um, we're going to do some amazing things for them. Um, there's a lot of different companies we're talking to. We're doing a, another project uh, with another company called Alpine. Amazing. Hector is the point person, and he's so grateful. Again, very humble, good people, give us a lot of lead times. We just ran the very first job for them, um, which was a sample. They just approved it, and he's blown away. I mean, like they love the work. We're running digital with the replica stuff, getting the kind of similar stuff that I told you about with the software and the finishes. So mm -hmm. it's more affordable. And these guys are actually doing very clean. They won awards with um, with stuff that they're doing in the space of marijuana, which normally in the past I wouldn't. But they're doing it in vape, but they're winning awards. Like I connected with the energy. I even tried it, and I couldn't believe how strong that thing was. It was so clean. It's way better than smoking it. And, you know, a lot of people, they need it for therapeutic purposes. Some people need this stuff because they can't, they're, they're sick and they're in the hospital and they can't eat instead of taking all these drugs. And so on the label that we printed for them actually gives them awards. Mm. Like, it, not awards, but um, it's lab tested and it shows how clean their stuff is. Right, right. So it's sativa and the other variation. I forgot the name. But, you know, sativa is one variation of marijuana plant. And so it's meant for vaping, but it's so clean. And these guys care about the brand. So premium, they pay premium, very good people, good energy. Again, so we're starting to work with some really, you know, great companies. Then these guys are big. They're doing a lot. So it's not like a small guy, but we love working with anyone. So this is another company we've been working with for a long time, uh, Dermamed. Um, these guys, this is, if you look up Dermamed, um, they do organic, natural skincare cosmetics. And these guys, um, instead of doing craft stock, so a craft stock is basically like this stock we did for moon juice. So this is a craft stock. Mm -hmm. This is their brand. They just want us to match that sample that they had before. Right. But see, this is not waterproof. But this is waterproof because it's on a plastic stock. 
Mm. You can't rip it. It's it's laminate, but we finish it with the matte finishing. So we're doing a lot of these replica foil stamp looks with different designs where we're imitating that kind of natural look. So we're getting very creative in the design and the branding stage, whether they do it or we do it. Um, here's another one. We, we, we're also starting to promote them. They're also doing a CBD hemp cream, and this is Sagley Naturals. And so they do like lotions and skincare. That looks all nice, natural. yeah. And so we, again, we print it on the digital press. This time around, we told them, hey, we noticed your box on your social media. It doesn't match the colors of the green and the gray. They say, oh, can you match it? So she dropped off her box, and we matched it this time around. So on the new, on the new stuff that you're going to see, how much better is it for their brand that yeah. we brought it up? Let's match your stuff. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff we're doing. So um, I'm grateful to work with, with these type of kind of companies. Um, and holistic isn't about just holistic. It's about good people. You know, yeah. it's people that like that we're meant to work with. It's like the universe is, is putting us together. We're all meant to help each other. So it's not just like, oh, it has to be a natural product. That's not what it's about. Right. Yeah. Edmund, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Look forward to meeting at one of these expos or, or yeah. the like. And um, you have a place now. You, you, anytime. No excuse. Excited, you have a place. So I would be honored if, if it's in the flow. You always can you know, come and have a place and, for you to, to stay. For sure. Everyone should check out labelchoices.com. Edmund, it's been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Much love. <laughs>